The following is a feature presentation of Television Sports USA, the Mislu Television Network. From Independence Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana, welcome to the 1983 Independence Bowl, featuring the Air Force Academy Falcons and the Rebels of the University of Mississippi. Tonight's Independence Bowl game is brought to you by the all-new Toyota Corolla Sport Liftback, reborn for 1984. See it at your local Toyota dealer. And by Old Milwaukee and Old Milwaukee Light, two of America's great-tasting beers. It doesn't get any better than this. Welcome to the start of college football's second season, the bowl game season. Tonight, from Shreveport, it's the Independence Bowl between Air Force and Old Miss. A pleasant good evening to you. I'm Steve Grad. Welcome to our telecast. We're happy to have you with us here in very rainy Shreveport, Louisiana. It rained all day and most of last night, and though they had a tarp on this field, about an hour ago when they took it off, it really came down hard, so you can be sure the field will be a big factor in tonight's contest. I'll be roving the sidelines and getting interviews with both teams, but right now, for a further look at both Mississippi and Air Force, let's go up to our play-by-play -play and colored commentators, Howard David and Bud Wilkinson. Well, thank you, Steve Grad, very much. Kenny Hatfield, in his fifth season at Air Force, has taken his team to a bowl game for his second consecutive year, while Billy Brewer, a first-year coach at Ole Miss, has done an incredible job turning a team around that was, at one point, one in five. Well, it's the hardest thing for a coach to do in a new job in a school that has been having trouble, as Ole Miss has been, is to turn it around and have the team get confidence. And the exceptional thing, Brewer was able to do this after getting off to a very shaky start, and basically they did it by simplifying their offense, avoiding sacks. They had 32 sacks in the first five games, and then changing quarterbacks, moving Powell in to start. Air Force ranked second in the nation in rushing offense, and in Ole Miss, they're playing a team while bigger than they are on the line, a smaller team than they're used to playing this year. Well, Hatfield, I think, has done a great job of utilizing his personnel, which is the name of the game if you're a coach. He splits the line a great deal, and then they scramble block. Instead of blocking high, they go after the feet of their opponents, and most defensive men aren't used to looking at that, and it's been very effective for them. Two coaches that are well-prepared, two teams that are well-prepared will match them up when we return to Independence Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana. Stay with us. One, Dwayne Dow and Mislu Television Network Control. This is the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana, a game that has come a long way in the past few years, getting better and better opponents to battle each other every single year. Let's look at this year's matchup, the Air Force against Ole Miss. And here's how they stack up for tonight's battle. First, Mississippi. After getting off to a bad start, one win and five losses, coach Billy Brewer's team turned it around. They won their last five games to finish six and five. It marked the first winning season for Ole Miss since 1975. And the Independence Bowl tonight with the Air Force is the first time since 1971 that the Rebels will go to a bowl game. Preseason polls picked Mississippi to finish dead last in the Southeastern Conference, but the Rebels put together a 4-2 league record. Although the offense had trouble getting in track during the early going, wide receiver Timmy Moffitt, tailback Buford McGee, and quarterback Kelly Powell helped turn things around. Moffitt had several key receptions, and his punt return of 66 yards against arch-rival Mississippi State keyed a great comeback against the Bulldogs. Powell, a starter after leading Ole Miss to victory over Vanderbilt, which was the first of five straight wins for the Rebels. Defense has been Mississippi's strong point. Led by end Andre Townsend, the Rebels held opponents to under 300 yards total offense in five of six winning games. Powered by one of the finest running attacks in the nation, the Air Force mounted a big winning streak toward the end of the season. One of the greatest victories in Air Force Academy history came at Notre Dame just a few weeks ago when the Falcons beat the Notre Dame Fighting Irish 23 to 22 to lock up the Independence Bowl berth. The Falcons are high in national rushing statistics. Also, they are ranked nationally in total offense and scoring. The spark plug on the Air Force attack, senior quarterback Marty Louthan, the magician of the Falcons' flexbone attack. Louthan leads the Falcons in total offense with over 1,800 yards, while the team's leading rusher is senior fullback John Kirshner with nearly 800 yards. 
So there's a look at the matchup in tonight's Independence Bowl, the Air Force battling Mississippi. Now we'll be back with the opening kickoff of the Independence Bowl right after these messages. There's the Old Miss Rebels coming out onto the field, and before this ball game tonight, they had a pep rally for Old Miss Bud Wilkinson. 12,000 attended the pep rally. You think they're ready to play a bowl game? Well, they're so thrilled to have a team in a bowl game after all the years that the uh, highs could kite. Marino Kosum, the Alcorn State head coach, said on the East Coast, football's a cultural experience. On the West Coast, it's a tourist attraction. In the Midwest, it's cannibalism, but in the South, it's religion, and Saturday is the holy day. <laughs> well, one of the uh, key factors in this game, of course, is the rest that Mississippi has had. The Air Force played last week against San Diego State. Uh, they've had a few people a little bit bruised up. Mississippi has had three weeks off, which means that they've had a chance to truly prepare for this wishbone attack and also to get everybody in top condition. As you look at Marty Louthen in the middle, number 11, along with Charlie Heath and Jeff Kubiak, the tri-co captains for the Air Force Academy. They are joined by the Old Miss co-captains in the middle of the field, Nesmith and Allen, uh, Andre Townsend, number 80, and we can't see him on the left of the screen, but it's Buford McGee, number 10. And we're ready for the ceremonial toss of the coin. Now, it's an interesting uh, coin that is being used this year. The coin used in the official toss is the 1983 U.S. Olympic silver coin. There you see it. The U.S. Treasury Department has minted the coins to raise funds for the 1984 Olympics. Now, the coin that is being used, the official coin of the uh, 83 U.S. Olympics, proceeds from the sale of the Olympic coins will be used to train and house U.S. amateur athletics and stage the 1984 games in Los Angeles. And if you'd like to have one of these coins, uh, you can call a toll-free number, 800-223-5818, and be a part of America. A big crowd expected tonight. The rain has dampened the spirits somewhat of the local community, but it certainly has not dampened the spirits, Bud Wilkinson, of the old Miss and Air Force contingents that have come here. Anytime you get a chance to go to a bowl game with your team that you followed all season, you're enthused and even though the field is damp and not in the best of shape, the spirit is as high as it can be. Air Force has won the toss of the coin. They have refused to, to receive and they will kick off. Dr. Cecil Lloyd and Tracy Jackson of the Independence Bowl Committee in the red jackets uh, in the ceremonial toss of the coin at midfield. Good decision, I think, by Air Force, Howard. Uh, the uh, opportunity to make the choice at halftime on a field like this is very, very helpful. You mentioned earlier, Bud, concerning the, the lapse of time that Old Miss has had since they played their last game, November 19th against Mississippi State, while Air Force has only played a week ago. Is there an advantage to one or the other? I think definitely the team that has had the rest. Uh, you don't have to rush your practices. You get an excellent scouting report. You have time to get the repetitions, repetitions, repetitions of what you're looking at, and you're already able to play than a team that's only had the normal five days of practice. The crowd expected tonight in the neighborhood of 48,000. At least that's how many tickets were sold prior to the ball game. I believe Old Miss and Air Force in consort have sold almost as many tickets as any other bowl game around the country. Now let's go down to the sidelines and our colleague, Steve Grad. With me is Leroy Mullins, the trainer from Mississippi. How, can, how does this weather affect your work? Well, we have to look for a lot of people having uh, trash in their eyes and things of this nature. As far as serious injuries, we don't usually get a lot of them on weather when the field is as rough as it is or wet as it is because their feet slide out from under them if they get hit on a leg, which is a, uh, say if they're going to get a knee injury. On artificial turf, we worry about their feet sticking to the turf, someone hitting them on the knee and their leg sticking. But here, the, usually their cleats will slide out from under them and we don't get the real serious injury. Leroy, thank you. Uh, we have to go back upstairs. I know you've got to go to work. Howard? That is Carlos Matios, who will be uh, kicking off for the um, Air Force Falcons. And back to receive the opening kickoff for Ole Miss will be uh, Stephen Cunningham. Along with Lee Davis, Mateos will be kicking off for the Air Force Academy. Before the ball game, they had a moment of silence for two Air Force cadets. Brian Bullard, who was a defensive tackle on this football team, and Diane Williams, also a member of the Air Force Academy and a member of the golf team at the Academy. Both sophomores, and unfortunately, a few weeks ago, both perished in a snowstorm that has plagued the uh, western part of the United States. And so we are just about ready to go for the eighth annual Independence Bowl football game. Carlos Mateos for the Air Force Academy. And 
as usual, and a windy night. The wind blows off the tee. Well, we have a moment, a reminder that this is an exclusive sports presentation of the Mislu Television Network, telecast solely for the entertainment of our audience and the rebroadcast and the reproduction of any portion of the Independence Bowl without the express written permission of the Mislu Television Network or ESPN is strictly prohibited. The announcers for this program are provided by Mislu and ESPN subject to the approval of the Independence Bowl. Here's the kickoff. Mateos, three yards deep in the end zone, and they'll not run it out. So... Ole Miss will set it up offensively. We'll give you the starting lineups for the Ole Miss Rebels. Clad tonight in white uniforms with blue numerals. Air Force had a choice to go with which uniforms they chose their blue. Here's the left tackle, Eric Denmark, getting a start tonight. The left guard is Bobby Clark. The center, Wayne Pierce. Right guard, John Allen. And the right tackle is Greg Walker. We'll give you the back to the receivers as they break out of the formation. Kelly Powell gets the start tonight. And it's Buford McGee who gets the game's first handoff. Four-yard gain to the 24-yard line. Sean Smith, the middle linebacker for Air Force, makes the stop in the play. Here's the rest of the old Miss Maxson receivers. Jamie Holder, a flanker, number 87. The tight end is Michael Smith. Quarterback Kelly Powell, who started since mid-year. Arthur Humphrey, the fullback. Buford McGee, the tailback. And Timmy Moffitt will be the flanker for the split end. Second down and six for Ole Miss. Buford McGee for a couple of yards, straight ahead. Dropped by Tom Stanbury, the right side linebacker. The offense of Mississippi is, as we expected, uh, straight ahead, taking no chances on any kind of fumbles, trying to get the feel of the Air Force defense that uh, has been one of those that has given up some yardage, but uh, they have also been very tough throwing their opponents for losses at critical times. Kelly Powell, a senior, six foot two, 204 pounds. He is six and one as a starting quarterback. Buford McGee for a first down and more. And almost broke it for the distance out near midfield. Only a saving tackle by the Air Force Falcons prevented him from going all the way. Buford McGee, number 10, gets the crowd going early on in the ball game, tackled by Greg Zollinger. A 19-yard pickup on the play and a first down. We take a look at it again. You can see the fullback. Humphrey making a good block, excellent block by the guard. Buford turned upfield, just tripped by the ankles, almost broken for the score. Excellent defensive play by the Air Force. Chris Funk. Quick reaction for a loss on the play. Also Larry Nicholas, the nose guard. Chris Funk had a fine day against Notre Dame, but two blocked field goals to help the Air Force win that big game. He's 6'4", 228 pounds. He's had 82 tackles during the season. He's quick, reacts well, moves to the ball. Coming out wide to the right side is Timmy Moffitt. Big play man, high formation, wide side of the field is to the right. The toss to Buford McGee, trying to go wide, and quick reaction by the left side linebacker, Carl Jetané. Also, Tom Stanbury in on the play. Jetané played that as well as you can. He's trying to be blocked out. He was able to force it to the inside. That made Buford take it to the outside. He had enough reaction and skill to move to the outside and knock him out of bounds. Stephen Cunningham comes out of the game, replaced by Jamie Holder at flanker. Steve Joyner, another tight end, comes into the ball game. Holder goes out wide to the right side. Third down and 10. And Powell back to throw. Excellent play by Air Force on the coverage and a fine play by Chris Funk, the left tackle. Once again, he was blocked fairly well, recovered from his block, moved inside, and had he not made that play, Powell might have picked up the first down. So that will bring onto the field Bill Smith for Ole Miss, averaging 41 yards per punt. Mike Kirby back in single safety for the Air Force Academy. There he is, number 82. And Kirby can break it for the distance. He is fast. Not much of a rush by Air Force, and a short kick. Takes an old Miss roll and goes dead inside the 10-yard line. Early on, first quarter, there is no score in the game at the 1983 Independence Bowl. We'll return to Shreveport, Louisiana, after these words from your local station. So 
Well, after a 44-yard punt by Bill Smith, Air Force deep in their own territory inside the 10-yard line. We have 12-15 remaining, first quarter, Air Force's first offensive pos uh, possession. Marty Louthan to the 20, and taken out of bounds after a fine pickup of 14 yards, ridden out of bounds by the quarterback, Eric Truitt. Uh, big play, they were backed up on the nine-yard line. And, uh, the triple option is awfully tough to stop. Let's take a look at it again. You can see the fake to the fullback. Uh, Ralph keeping the ball, faking the pitch. Number four is chasing the possible pitch man. He turns it upfield, makes a beautiful first down. First down, Air Force from their own 24-yard line. Wide side of the field is to the left. On the counter, Mike Brown, the left halfback, tackled by Dwayne Nesmith, the left side linebacker for Ole Miss. This is a cameraman's nightmare watching the wishbone, bud. Well, Brown has the incredible average of 8.5 yards per carry. I don't think in all the time I've ever been on football, I've heard of an athlete who has played a season, 11 games, and still averaged eight and a half yards per try. That is incredible. Obviously led the nation in that category. Mike Kirby comes out wide to the left side. He draws Lee Davis, the right side quarterback, out of the wishbone, obviously, for the Air Force Falcons, making their second ball appearance in as many years. Marty Louthan on the option to the 35-yard line, close to a first down. The entire offensive backfield uh, of the Air Force Academy is averaging 5.9 yards per rush, so this is a team that deserves to be number two in the national rankings. First down for uh, Marty Louthan of the Air Force Academy. A reminder to our stations down the line, we'll be taking a network break in our next commercial timeout. And then we'll be back on track. One of the things that uh, the Air Force does so well is get off on the starting count. If you watch their offensive line, they move with the ball, which enables them to get a jump on the defensive lineman. First down, Air Force, their own 35-yard line. Louthan back to throw and making the connection inside Ole Miss territory to Jerry Rose, the tight end. Tackle there by Carl Lewis. Jerry Rose, I believe only caught three balls all year, and here the tight end was used very effectively on this play. The defense has to rotate when the entire wishbone backfield goes to the right of the screen as they did here. Just a drag pattern across the field to Rose. There was no one there. He's really more of a blocker than he is receiver, but he can catch the ball if it's thrown to him. A first down for Air Force inside Ole Miss territory at the, Air, at the Ole Miss 43-yard line, a pickup of 12 on the play. A reminder that this drive started at Air Force's nine-yard line. They now have it at Ole Miss's 43. First down. Kirshner inside the 40. And once again, a great read by Laufen. The defense always assigns someone to the fullback, someone to the quarterback, and someone to the possible pitch man. But if any one of them get blocked and you read it the way Laufen does, somebody's going to make some yardage, and that's what's happened all year. The only thing we didn't do was assign someone to the weatherman for this ball game. Just clean it up a little bit now, though. Yeah. <laughs> Mike Brown back in the game at left halfback. Jody Simmons goes out. Kirby goes out wide to the left side. Second down, Air Force. Laughing on the option and a fine play by Mike Brown, the left halfback, tackled by Eric Truitt, but Mike Brown did all he could do to hold on to the pitch. It was an accurate pitch, though. He made him stretch for it, but uh, when the ball is a little bit slippery and you get that kind of a fast reaction that he had to play here, as you can see, he comes off the fake to the fullback, and then when the man is ready to play him, he puts the pitch out there, and Jones makes the key block on the corner man, Truitt. Randy Jones made a fine block, as you said, but and it's a first down for Air Force. John Kirshner, Randy Jones, and Mike Brown, the backfield, behind Marty Louthan, number 11 for Air Force. Mike Kirby, the wide receiver to the left side. Inside handoff to John Kirshner, and Andre Townsend, the right tackle, comes up big. Again, I'm very impressed by the takeoff of that offensive line. They get to the defense so quickly, and they occupy them on those scramble blocks. The backs pick their hole, and Laufen reads the defense. Second down, Air Force at the 24-yard line of Ole Miss. Second and five. Second and six. 9-11 remaining. First quarter, there's no score in the game. X 
excellent play by old Mrs. Freddie Nunn, the right defensive end. Keyed on Marty Laffin and stayed with him. One of the few times that uh, he had nothing to read. The uh, Nunn was there in his face before he could exercise any kind of an option. Take a look at the play again. You can see the fake to Kirshner, and there's Nunn hitting him so quickly he did not have time to come off the fake and see him. Freddie Nunn runs the 40 and 4.5, and that is quick for a man 6'4", 223. It'll bring a third down and nine for Air Force from the Ole Miss 33-yard line as Kirby goes out wide to the left side. This doesn't bother the Air Force. They just play their normal offense as the rain starts again. Quarterback draw, Marty Laufen, and it doesn't work. Ran into his own man. Stopped short of the 25-yard line. Carl Lewis made the initial tackle, number 48 for Ole Miss, and it's going to bring up fourth down. And See if they bring on the field goal unit. Soon it's a place kick. <laughs> that would mean Sean Pavlich, the field goal kicker, leading Air Force scorer in their history. He'll put this one down at the 34-yard line. It'll be a 44-yard kick. Keep in mind, with Je Greg Zollinger holding, do not eliminate fakes, but not in this kind of weather, I would imagine. The kick is on its way, and it is good. So Air Force draws first blood at the 8th Annual Independence Bowl football game, and they take a 3 to nothing lead. Three to nothing Air Force here in Shreveport, Louisiana. We'll return right after these messages. Here are the return men for Ole Miss trailing three to nothing as Air Force has struck first with 737 remaining in the first quarter. Rain continues to pour down here in Shreveport, Louisiana. It has rained all. Mateos will be kicking off for the Air Force. He'll be kicking to Lee Davis. Last drive for Air Force, 65 yards and 10 plays, resulting in a 44-yard field goal by Sean Pavlich. Air Force had the ball for four minutes and 38 seconds in that drive. That's very key, bud. They wanted to control the clock. And Ole Miss wants the ball. <laughs> yeah. Davis at the ones, slips momentarily and goes straight up midfield. Got a seam. Good return across the 30-yard line. After stumbling momentarily, he returns at 30 yards. Sean Pavlich makes the tackle. Or Carlos Mateos made the tackle for Air Force. Defensively for Air Force, Charlie Heath, Chris Funk, Larry Nicholas, and John Ziegler across the front. As we get a look at Kelly Powell, the quarterback for Ole Miss. Arthur Humphrey across the 35. Tom Stanbury, the right side linebacker, makes the stop for Air Force. Let's go down to Steve Grad. This is Sean Pavlich. You put Air Force on top of the 44-yarder. You didn't feel uh, upset by the rain? Oh, uh, not yet. Uh, it's kind of sticky out there, but you just got to slow it down a little bit and just make sure you just punch the ball more than anything. And you did it perfectly. Oh, uh, so far, thank you. Sean Pavlich. Gain of seven on the play, second down and three. Buford McGee is dropped for a loss and an excellent play by John Ziegler, the right tackle. He simply avoided the block, shot the gap to the inside, and fortunately the play was called right where he was shooting. Only a sophomore, 6'3", 230. Quick reaction. You can see him shooting the inside gap and straightening up and making a solid tackle on McGee. Almost a form tackle, like you teach it in practice, kind of half speed. <laughs> That'll bring up third and four for Ole Miss from their own 38-yard line. Quinn receivers to the left side as Powell rolls left. Throws on the run, and he's got the connection in Air Force territory at the 47-yard line to Timmy Muffet. Timmy Muffet, the coaches tell me, is probably the best receiver for Ole Miss against man coverage. He's an excellent uh, receiver with fine speed, very good hands. As we take a look at it again, the rollout by Powell makes it difficult to rush him. Moffitt has executed the little curl perfectly, breaks it back to the inside, has marvelous balance. He's caught 35 balls this year, an average of 15.9 per reception. Here's the draw to McGee. Excellent play by Buford McGee inside the 30-yard line and still on his feet inside the 25. What a tremendous individual effort by number 10, Buford McGee. 
There were four missed tackles on the play, but uh, when you talk about missed tackles, it's a question, who are you trying to tackle? And he's a great ball carrier. Now, you're not hearing booing in the stands. They're calling Buford, Buford, Buford. He's amazing. Chuck Peterson made the tackle. Look at it again. There's one miss. He balances, keep. He's hit again. Just runs right straight through number 32. That's Harada. Finally goes down, but it was a marvelous individual effort. First down play. Again, it's McGee to the 20-yard line. McGee's unofficially seven carries for 46 yards. Charlie Heath made the tackle for Air Force on the last play. It's important, I think, to make the point that this Mississippi team has never played a game where they have not been behind. So this being behind three to nothing isn't going to upset them a whole lot. Just throw this into the mix, right? Right on. Coming into the game for Ole Miss, Stephen Cunningham at flanker. He replaces Andre Rogers. Twin receivers to the right side for Ole Miss, second and six. From the 21, Humphrey, nowhere. Quick reaction again by the defensive end, Charlie Heath. He's an excellent player for four years. He has started every game for Air Force for four years. Being up third down and five for Ole Miss from the 20-yard line of Air Force. Two tight ends come into the ball game, or two flankers rather, Jamie Holder and Steve Joyner, who is a tight end, is in the game. Twins to the left side, a third down and five for Ole Miss. Powell looking into the end zone, it is intercepted. Ron Wilson with the interception, penalty marker on the play. So everybody just hold on. There is a marker on the play. Might be a clip on the return. I think the flag was thrown well after the interception. The ball was overthrown. Wilson was in perfect position for the overthrow. However, had the ball been on target, it would have been a completed pass. Air Force, I believe, will retain possession of the ball. I think the penalty occurred after the interception. Roll out by, uh, by Powell, and you can see the pass is overthrown into Wilson's hands. And there was the clip just to the right of the screen. And they're calling the clip now on the penalty. Wilson made a very fine run, however, after making the catch. Timmy Moffitt was the intended receiver on the play. Blocking below the waist, the yeah. call against Air Force after the interception. First down for the Falcons. We have four minutes, 21 seconds remaining. First quarter of play in Shreveport, Louisiana. The score, Air Force three and Ole Miss nothing. All right, we're back to Independence Stadium here in Shreveport. Howard David along with Bud Wilkinson and Steve Grad roaming the sidelines. There's Ken Hatfield, the head coach at Air Force in his fifth season, succeeded a good old friend of ours, a good old friend of mine, and many of the members of the crew here in uh, Shreveport, Bill Parcells, the head coach of the Giants. The Air Force has not had what you'd call a great field position on their two possessions. First time they had the ball on the nine, and this time, of course, on the four-yard line. Long way to go. Air Force turns it over rarely. They had three turnovers in their last game against San Diego State a week ago. Kind of prepared them for this game, though. It was played on a very sloppy, wet exactly. field. Exactly. Exactly. A gain of four on the play by John Kirshner. It'll be second and four Air Force from their own nine-yard line. Kirby out wide to the left. There's a penalty marker thrown. Perhaps a legal procedure could be the call against the Air Force. Legal procedure is the call against the academy. They'll step off five yards. I believe Mark Melcher, the right guard, was the man that was uh, moving a bit, running down the interior five for Air Force. John Wygand and Scott Wackingham, Wackingheim correction, are the tackles. Fred Futrell and Mark Melcher, the guards. Don Overdick, the center. Tight end is Jerry Rose, Mike Kirby, the wide receiver in the backfield of John Kirshner, Randy Jones, and Mike Brown behind quarterback Marty Louthan. Second down and 10. Excellent play by Ole Miss. Kirshner stopped in his tracks by Carl Lewis and Andre Townsend. Townsend's a remarkable athlete. Great speed, great size. When he went to Ole Miss as a freshman, he was 6'1", weighed 190. And this is his senior year. He now is 6'3 and weighs 267. So he's had a little growth while he's been there. 
at the Minuteman luncheon yesterday before the Independence Bowl. Bob Lilly was the guest speaker from formerly of the Dallas Cowboys. And he was talking about when he was in high school, he said he was 6'5", 160. And in four years, he went to 6'5", 240. Laughton rolling left in the end zone. Dangerous pass and an excellent grab at the 21-yard line and a first down to Mike Kirby. Air Force gets out of a hole in one play. Can't have a bigger play than that uh, when you've got third down and 12 as we take a look at it. See how patient he is as he rolls out and how beautifully Kirby moved in front in order to make the reception. Clark was the man that was giving him the cushion and he gave him just a little bit too much cushion but Ralph and throwing the ball moving to his left and putting it on the numbers that way gives you some idea of his athletic skill. 17 yards in the pickup. Ralph and still has it. Connection to the tight end, Jerry Rose. His second reception of the night, Lee Davis is there. Jerry Rose had two receptions during the regular season. He's had two here tonight in, in a bowl game. Well, that same drag pattern, and uh, so far Mississippi has not uh, adjusted the defense for it. They need to roll when the entire backfield goes one way or the other, and there's only one man left over there to cover. Little more than two minutes remaining in the first quarter. Air Force leads Ole Miss by the score of three to nothing. It's a second and four play coming up for the Air Force Academy from their own 27-yard line. Inside handoff near the 30-yard line. Bob Lakemore very quickly in on the play as he stops John Kirshner. So 14 is uh, very patient, very solid in everything they do. They have poise in every situation. Kirshner bunged up a little bit on the play, I believe, going off. He's backed up by Sunquist. They call the two fullbacks the <coughs> Bruise Brothers because they're that tough. Okay, it's a big <laughs> Ted Sunquist, the senior at six foot tall, 202 pounds. Let's go. Let's go, Average 5.4 yards per carry throughout the year. Kirby goes out wide to the right side. Third down in the yard for Air Force. First down, Laufen and Moore across the 40-yard line to the 41-yard line. Taking a look at it again, you can see the beautiful fake to the fullback, Sunquist. They were playing for the pitch man. Laufen turns it upfield, picks up the first down and a big gain. First down for Air Force from their own 41-yard line. Less than a minute to play in the first quarter. Air Force on top by the score of 3-0. Kirby wide right. Sunquist still in there for Air Force at fullback. Here's the pitch to the tailback. Randy Jones taken out of bounds by Lee Davis, the cornerback. Air Force has not thrown the ball a great deal, as we know, but Laufen thus far is three for three and 45 yards. He was the best percentage passing quarterback, efficient quarterback, I should say, in the WAC conference. In the, in the regular season, he hit 53.4% of his passes. He's a great athlete, great player. 38 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. Sundquist goes out, and Kirshner comes back into the game for Air Force. Making their second trip to a bowl game in as many years. They beat Vanderbilt last year in the Hall of Fame Bowl. Old Miss hasn't been to a bowl game in 12 years. Laufen with room to the right. 50, 45 to the 41 yard line and a first down. And once again, a remarkable block by Jones. Great inside fake. Watch the play again. You can see the defense closing on the fullback and there's Jones. He was kind of wiped out on the play, but uh, Laufen was able to come off that block, move downfield, running the option perfectly for another first down. A gain of 15 on the play. Clock moves, 20 seconds remaining in the first quarter as Kirby comes out wide to the left side. First down, Air Force, 41-yard line of Ole Miss. Inside handoff to Jody Simmons. Eric Truitt and Andre Townsend make the stop of the play. That's going to be the last play of the first quarter. That's the end of the first quarter with the score, Air Force 3, 
and Ole Miss nothing. But they're on their way into the stadium, I promise you. No, it's not Superman that's coming in, it's the Air Force Wings of Blue. <laughs> They better hit the stadium field than hit the stadium. <laughs> well, they've got total control of their parachutes. And they finally come into our view. There they are. That's one of them. The Air Force wings of blue. Bullseye. I'm assuming there are more. First down statistics. Air Force had seven first downs. Ole Miss had three. Air Force 83 yards rushing to Ole Miss 58. Air Force with 45 yards passing. Marty Louthan three of three for, 40, for 45 yards. While Kelly Powell was one of two with one interception for 16 yards. And that one interception, of course, cost them a field goal. They were in field goal range, so had he not thrown the interception, the score might be three to three. Uh, Air Force has been in control of the ball for eight minutes and 59 seconds, almost nine minutes against six minutes for the University of Mississippi. For all of the, uh, the stations that are along the network, we remind you that we are back on schedule with our uh, commercial timeouts. We appreciate you staying with us and bearing with us. The Air Force uh, wing of blue has made his entrance into Shreveport's Independent Stadium, and I believe it's the only one we're going to see. 3-0. As we begin the second quarter of play, Howard David along with Bud Wilkinson and Steve Grad for the eighth Independence Bowl football game, matching 9-2 Air Force, 6-5 Ole Miss, a team that, yes, 6-5, but has won their last five in a row, including the Egg Bowl against Mississippi State. I'm going to find out why they called it the Egg Bowl before this night is out. <laughs> it was an exciting game. Ole Miss uh, hanging uh, at the end uh, on precious lead to a, a two-point lead. And Mississippi State had a chance to kick a field goal in the next to last play of the ball game. And the wind held it up as it got close to the crossbar. As the Ole Miss players said, they had the Lord working on their side. <laughs> Who can argue? Mississippi State's... Uh a flex bone team also uh, they call it the t-bone really but uh, they made 344 yards rushing against mississippi and were leading 17 and nothing at the half so it was truly a great comeback by ole miss second down louthan close to the 30 yard line i believe he will have enough for a first down roger clark the free safety made the stop on that man number 11 marty louthan a 53 percent completion percentage this year through three touchdown passes but only three interceptions of course as infrequently as air force throws the ball that's not a hard statistic to uh, to swallow he's a completely capable player when you are an option team not to turn the ball over is rare and air force simply does not do it Kirby goes out of the ball game, replaced by Tom Coleman, a junior wide receiver. They need Kirby. If they lose him, they lose their punt return man, which would be a tragic loss for them. The officials have uh, apparently the scoreboard clock has uh, has gone haywire. We'll return to Shreveport. With the score, Air Force 3, Old Miss nothing, we'll be back. 14 minutes, 28 seconds remaining second quarter at the Independence Bowl. Air Force leading it by the score of 3 to nothing with Sean Pavlich field goal. The only thing that separates these two teams at the moment, and Air Force has control of the football, an excellent field position. First down at the Ole Miss 31-yard line. Next week, be sure and join us for the Florida Citrus Bowl from Orlando, Florida, where Tennessee and Maryland will do battle. Wes, I missed three things he wanted. And so will the city of Orlando do battle with the tones of one Lee Corso, who will be joining me in Florida. First down, Air Force. Up inside handoff. Maybe a yard or two, and that's all. 
very solid defensive play by the Ole Miss line and linebackers. You can see Air Force is going on a very quick count. They're doing that because Ole Miss team has been jumping their defense if they take a normal rhythm in getting the ball in play. It'll bring up second down and eight for Air Force. Tom Coleman goes out. Mike Kirby back in as a wide receiver split out wide to the left side. Laughing in the option, nowhere. Dropped for a loss. Bob Lakemore, the left tackle. One of the real keys to this Ole Miss defense. Came up big there. He shot the inside cap. Uh, Air Force splits their line more than I think any team playing college football today. And when you do split the line, you are vulnerable to someone shooting the gap if they're quick enough to get the penetration. Third down and 11, as you can see, and the rain comes down in droves here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Yesterday, and today it comes down in sheets. Jerry Rose goes out at tight end. Boy, just look at that rain. Hanging there with us, still going to be a very tough game. Lofton with a deep drop. Play goes for naught. Pass to Mike Brown, and a quick reaction by the quickest man of the line, Andre Townsend. Little screen pass, uh, well executed. Uh, uh, Townsend read the play perfectly and has the quickness and speed to get to Brown. Townsend with 4-7 speed in the 40 can dominate a football game. He's only a second team, SEC, all SEC. However, a lot of folks say that this young man could go very high in the draft. Kubiak comes into the game, the putter for Air Force on fourth down. Kubiak, an interesting story following this game. Uh, later next week, he's going to be taking his interview, or having his interview for his Rhodes Scholarship. Barry Wilbert is back for Ole Miss. Kubiak angles it to the sideline, and it goes out of bounds inside the 15 at around the 11-yard line. And so Ole Miss will put it in play. First down from their own 11-yard line with Air Force on top by the score of three to nothing. Seconds remaining, second quarter at the Independence Bowl. Air Force leading Ole Miss by the score of three to nothing. A 26-yard punt by Kubiak. Puts Ole Miss back deep in their own territory at the 11-yard line. Kelly Powell, the senior quarterback, at 6'2", 204 pounds. Humphrey, the fullback. Dropped by Charlie Heath and Chris Funk. Now let's go to Steve Grad. Jeff, you just made that great punt to the 11. What's tougher, punting inside their 20-yard line in this rainer, earning a, a road scholarship? Right now, punting is, the footing out there is not too great. Uh, road scholarships next week, I'll worry about that then. Okay, nice punt, Jeff. Thank you. Good work, Jeff Kubiak, in the classroom as well as on the field. Second down and seven, Ole Miss. Humphrey to the 15. See the uh, Air Force line adjusting their positions after Miss Mississippi had taken their line stance and could not move. They rarely play their nose guard dead on the center in the zero technique. He's always on one side or the other, giving a chance to shoot the gap. John Smith, Larry Nicholas, and John Ziegler in on the play for Air Force. Third down and six for Old Miss at the 15 yard line. Out of the eye formation. And the toss to Buford McGee. Stop short of a first down by Bob Avila. And it's going to bring up a punting situation for Ole Miss. The two possessions that uh, Air Force has had, they drove 65 yards before they kicked the field goal, and then they drove 76 yards before they were thrown for the loss and had to punt. Mike Kirby back in single safety for Air Force. Averages a little better than 10 yards per return. Billy Smith averaged 45 yards per punt in his last five ball games. He'll need a big one here to get Ole Miss out of a jam. And hits it well. Drives Kirby back. A super punt. Kirby at the 31. 40, 45, 50, 40, 35 down inside the 35-yard line. Tackled by Stephen Cunningham. Big return by Mike Kirby. Kirby, the punt return that uh, Air Force uses is simply let people run their patterns 
then try to block them in the lane, and Kirby waits for this, and then he comes right up the field. He doesn't try to go to the sidelines as most punt returns are designed to do, but you can see the Air Force blockers have picked up some of the men coming downfield. He makes a very fine return before being tackled by Cunningham. A 50-yard return by Mike Kirby. 10-14 remaining. Second quarter, Air Force leading Ole Miss by the score of 3 to nothing. We'll be back. The punt by Billy Smith was 50 yards. The return by Mike Kirby. The return by Mike Kirby was 35 yards after the 50-yard punt. So Air Force sets it up in excellent field position at the Ole Miss 34-yard line with 10-14 remaining second quarter. Doesn't really much matter how good the kick is when you get the kind of return. 15 net yards. They say that the weather like this is good for ducks, right? There he is. Big play up inside Mike Brown. Brings it open off to the left and dropped by Roger Clark. John Wygand and Fred Butrell, the left offensive side of the line for Air Force, opening up the hole. And that little uh, trap play or counter play takes away all of the fundamental keys that are used to stop the normal flex bone or wishbone attack. Coming out wide to the right side is Tom Coleman for Air Force. In in place of Kirby. Jerry Rose, the tight end, lining up on the left side. Five-man front for Ole Miss, second down. First down play there on the conversion anyway. Andre Townsend on the quick reaction on the tackle of Mike Brown. Mike Brown came into this ball game a little nicked up. Here's the brain trust of Air Force. Ken Hatfield told me yesterday he wouldn't let me back in the Air Force. He said, you did your time, that's it. <laughs> and again, you can see the rain coming down. It's... First down for Air Force at the 23-yard line of Ole Miss. Air Force leads it by the score of 3 to nothing. We have 9-18 remaining second period. You can hear the weather and see it as well. Matthew Lovelady making the stop on the play on the left side on John Kirshner. They had a tornado watch here in the Shreveport area earlier today. I just assume not watch it. I don't even want to see it. I'll tell you when you hear that thunder as we just did, then you see the flash of lightning, and then you see the rain pouring down, and you wonder why are those people still out there in the stands. Second and nine for Air Force, coming up to the 22-yard line of Ole Miss. They love football, and they love their teams. That's why they're there. Coleman goes out wide to the right side. Louthen, three of three, throwing the ball in spite of this rain. Louthen is dropped immediately on the option by Matthew Lovelady and Carl Lewis. Love lady number 95, a senior, 6'2", 228 pounds. We said at the top of the show that while Ole Miss outweighs Air Force on the line, this is still one of the smallest teams that Air Force has played this year. And once again, we got those flashes of lightning. And the roll of the thunder. Coleman goes out. Kirby comes back in for Air Force at the wideout. Third down and nine coming up for the Falcons. I'd like to see the umpire covered the ball with the towel. He let the ball be rained down there between downs. Laughing on the option. Pass is blocked at the line of scrimmage by Lee Cole, number 50. And will bring up fourth down. See, Lawton moving back, looking down the line. He gets ready to throw the ball, and number three comes up in the air, very tall. It's Joe Hall knocking the ball down. I think the receiver was open, had Hall not made a great play. Sean Pavlich will come in to try a field goal from 39 yards away. He is three for three this year from this distance. Looks good. And it is. Being a straight-ahead kicker is a great advantage on this kind of a field. The sidewinders slip as they go forward. No question about it. So Air Force tacks another field goal on the board, and they take a 6 to nothing lead with 7.39 remaining until the end of the second quarter here at Independence Stadium, Shreveport, Louisiana, where the elements are a big part of this ball game here tonight. We have seven minutes, 39 seconds remaining, second quarter of play at the Independence Bowl under a very rough sky, a lot of rain, lightning, lighting up the sky over Shreveport. 
They had a tornado watch here earlier today, as I mentioned. But it hasn't uh, chased many fans away. The umbrellas are out. It's like a day at the beach with all these umbrellas. Great color. Up to one of the up men at the 15-yard line. Andre Rogers, as he takes it across the 25-yard line. Air Force rushing thus far in the ballgame, 99 yards and 22 carries. Tackle made by Pat Malakowski for Air Force. And now Ole Miss will set it up first and 10 from their own 28-yard line. Last drive by Air Force, 12 yards, six plays, and a 39-yard field goal the result, along with a 44-yard field goal earlier. Buford McGee. We'd like to inform all of our viewers that we've sent some of our cameramen to cover because it is very dangerous. Not the rain, but the lightning. So we're uh, short a camera too, but I am sure you'll understand. Ole Miss, uh, but has had their strength in the second period. They have scored more points in the second period than any other period uh, during the course of the year. He is a very strong ball carrier. He had nothing on the last play and made a few yards anyway. Made five. Here's McGee again trying to twist and turn his way for a couple of yards. Chris Funk, John Sigler, and Larry Nicholson on the play along with Tom Stanbury. Now let's go to Steve Grad underneath the umbrella. Listen, who's braving the elements. <laughs> let me tell you something. It is lightning. Why are you hearing a lightning and thunderstorm? I enjoy watching football. <laughs> well, that's pretty blunt. She doesn't care what the elements are. It's bad. Howard, I hope you're dry. <laughs> yeah, Steve, I got to hand it to you. You will get the Nobel Peace Prize at the end of tonight's telecast. Third and three, Air, uh, Ole Miss at their own 36-yard line. Cunningham in motion. Passes intercepted by Air Force inside the 50-yard line. Uh, Peterson, very, very good play. Chuck Peterson made the interception, but it was Tom Stanberry that made the deflection. Watch the play again. Powell is rolling to his own right. He's getting ready to throw the ball now, and you can see as he gets rid of the ball, it goes downfield and is tipped by Stansberry and comes down in the arms of Zollinger that made the interception. Let's take a look at it again from a different angle, and we'll see the tip here up in the air. It's perfect execution of the old tip drill and the interception made nicely. Line of scrimmage, 48-yard line of Ole Miss. Air Force leading at 6 to nothing. Kirshner inside the 45-yard line. Either Kirshner or Sunquist. One's 30 and one's 38. And I believe it's Sunquist. Lee Cole and Mike Fitzsimmons combining on the stop of 10 Sunquist. Coleman comes into the game as a wide receiver in place of Mike Kirby. As soon as we get the opportunity, we're going to hear some. Uh, we're going to hear from Greg Zollinger. The safety that made the interception. Kirby comes out wide to the right side. Second down and six, Air Force, 44-yard line of Ole Miss. Looks like a loose ball, and it is Ole Miss that's come up with it in the person of Mike Fitzsimmons. Fitzsimmons only a freshman, 6'3", 255, and comes up with a big play. The handoff, you can see the mesh here. Rothen giving the ball and then trying to get the ball back out again, but that time Kirshner did not get a good grasp on it, and the exchange failed. It's a turnover, and Old Miss has the ball. Moffitt comes out wide to the left side, along with Jamie Holder. There's an opportunity for Old Miss to get back in it. Buford McGee across the 45-yard line. Ball came loose, but that was after the whistle at Bowen played dead. Sean Smith and Charlie Heath combining for Air Force with 5-17 remaining second quarter and Air Force leading it 6-0. Andre Rogers comes in at flanker in place of Jamie Holder. The interesting thing about the last interception that Powell threw was the fact that in 104 attempts he had only been picked off twice during the year. McGee, already, go ahead. Excuse me, already twice in this game. McGee already 12 carries, 67 yards. Here's McGee. Managed to get back to the line of scrimmage when it appeared that he was going to lose yardage. Greg Zoniger came up with the play. 
And it will bring up third down. Does a great job of getting past the first man, as you can see. Huggins can make him the miss. And then we get a beautiful open field tackle. Perfect blocking and very, very fine. His head was in front and he was being pursued from behind. And after running past Huggins, he then was down. Third, third down and six. Holder in motion. Powell looking to put it up. Sliding catch by Holder inside the 50-yard line. Jamie Holder near a first down. It looks like he has enough. Carl Jetonet made the stop of the play for Air Force. Now let's get out of Steve Brad. Mike Fitzsimmons, tell me about that recovery of the fumble. Well, the fullback died, and uh, I got fullback responsibility on that defense. We were in an Eagle G, and I got him, I got my arm on it, and uh, it was it popped loose, and I just fell right on top of it. How could you hold on to a ball in these conditions? It's tough, but you want it bad enough, it's yours. Okay. Mike Fitzsimmons. First down, Ole Miss. Cunningham in motion. Al looking for Cunningham, and he makes the reception inside the 40-yard line, near another first down for Ole Miss. And after two interceptions, Powell has shown great poise. He certainly isn't bothered by having that ball picked off twice. Cunningham with nine receptions during the regular season for 120 yards. That one was good for nine yards. It'll be second down and one. Coming into the game for Ole Miss is Dan Boyce. Now, Dan Boyce is an offensive guard, usually wears number 75. He's switched jerseys. He's now wearing number 81. He's now come in as a tight end. McGee in motion. Second down. And there's a penalty marker on the play. Looked like there was movement on the left side of the Ole Miss line. Timeout call. Illegal motion is the call against Ole Miss. Will nullify the first down pickup. It'll remain second down. Eric Denmark, I believe, was the man that was moving. As and you look at Billy Brewer. Second and six is a lot different than second and one. <laughs> Powell, giving you another view of his statistics after two interceptions. He's completed three out of five, had two interceptions, but the last couple of passes he's shown remarkable poise. The officials tonight, the referee is Raymond Bauer, the umpire Jim Riley, linesman Bill Cronin, line judge is Joe Carroll, field judge is James Ole Miss at the 43-yard line. McGee is not going to go anywhere. Quick reaction by Tom Huggins, the Falcon back, a defensive back, and a rover. And that's the option play and run from the I formation. Same basic offensive theory as the Air Force triple option, but uh, that time the defense played it perfectly. There's the inside fake to the fullback. Not really much of a fake. The pitch by Powell and there's just no place for McGee to run as we have Huggins up there before he has a chance to get the ball under control and try to avoid the tackle. Steve Kelly in the ball game for Air Force on defense. Third down and 11. Ole Miss. Powell, deep drop. Excellent pass and a good connection to Timmy Muffet. A very hard pass to throw, the deep sideline route, and it works there very well to Timmy Moffat and a first down. And a very talented throw. It was over the corner man, just in front of the second man. As we take another look at it again, misdirection in the backfield, going to the left of the screen. Powell sets up, throws. Moffat makes the break perfectly, comes down with both feet inbounds. He was tackled there, but he does pick up the first down. Made the break in exactly the correct spot on the field. 15-yard pickup and a first down for Ole Miss with 2.43 remaining until the end of the second quarter. 6-0 Air Force, Ole Miss threatening. This is their deepest penetration. Inside handoff to Humphrey. Arthur Humphrey, a tough runner, a junior, tackled by Steve Kelly. Humphrey, interesting statistic about Humphrey is the fact that in 138 carries this year, he only lost yardage twice, a yard each time. Very fireplug type runner. 5'11", 204 pounds, strong. Boyce goes out at tight end, replaced by Michael Smith. Holder in motion, second down and seven. Powell wants to throw it. Off the hands of Jamie Holder. Tom Huggins defending on the play. Jamie Holder is one of these athletes that 
He was a walk-on, 87, as you get a look at him, and kept trying and trying and trying. And last summer, caught two to 300 passes a day to win a spot on this roster. Not a big man, 5'9", 166, but as you say, Art, he's got marvelous determination, a, a heart, attitude. Stephen Cunningham in the ball game with a play from head coach Billy Brewer. 2.05 remaining, second quarter, third and seven play coming up, Ole Miss. Both teams have all three timeouts remaining. Good point at the 29-yard line. Cunningham in motion. Powell with a deep drop. Throws to the end zone. Overthrown. Intended for Timmy Muffet. He had his man beat, but the ball was overthrown. Juan Wilson covering on the play. Again, a very fine move by Powell. He avoided the rush, moved forward, saw that his receiver was open, stopped just short of the line of scrimmage and delivered the ball, but it was just a little bit too long. And Ole Miss calls for a timeout, one of the three allotted. Their first timeout of the first half with one minute 58 seconds remaining. Until the end of, of the first half, Air Force leading it by the score of six to nothing. We'll be back. Six to nothing, the score. Air Force leading on two field goals. And now Bill Smith, who has never kicked a field goal this year, in this neighborhood, this will be about a 46-yarder. He was 0 for 4 between 40 and 49 yards coming into this ball game. Moffitt to hold. The kick is away. It has the distance, but it is wide. So the Air Force holds. And they maintain a 6 to nothing lead. Here's Bill Smith. Smith had been doing the field goal, kicking off and putting, and then the season went along, they felt his leg was getting a little bit tired from that much kicking, so they took him out of the field goals, except when it's a long, long kick, and uh, he has been punting the ball remarkably well, as you said, 45 yards an average in the last few games. All right, Air Force, with all three of their timeouts remaining, they lead it 6 to nothing with a minute and 53 remaining. Can a wishbone attack take it down 61 yards before halftime? The unusual. <laughs> Lofton, not that way, no gain. Freddie Nunn, one of the stars of that defensive line for Ole Miss. He is quick at 14 tackles, but against uh, Mississippi State three weeks ago. He's been a very fine player. Let's take a look at number 31 here, Nunn. There's the mesh. We've got to wait to see who gets the ball. This time it's Lofton coming out with the ball instead of leaving it with the fullback. And Nunn waits for him. Makes a beautiful tackle, just smothering it. Now Kirby comes out of the game. Tom Coleman with a play from the sidelines. Clock running, minute and 15 to go until the end of the half. Louthen, 35, 37-yard line. Freddie Nunn again is there. Air Force making no attempt to stop the clock. Perhaps they're content with a 6 to nothing lead. You can see the Mississippi line move just before the ball was snapped. Uh, Air Force earlier in the game was going on a very quick count first audible in order to move before the Ole Miss defensive line could move. Ole Miss has called for a timeout. That would be their second timeout of this half. As perhaps they feel that they can stop Air Force on a third down play. It'll be third and two. And it's very difficult to stop a wishbone team on third and two. And they feel that they can. They'll force them to punt and maybe get the ball back before halftime. Loughton, 11 carries, 56 yards. Sound strategy by uh, Old Miss to do that because uh, they uh, will get a timeout if they do stop it when the ball is exchanged. Uh, the mesh is really, when I use that term, it's where the quarterback and the fullback meet, and they both now have the ball, and either one can come out with it. And the defense is never sure, of course, whether the quarterback will let the fullback have it or whether the quarterback will keep it. All right, uh, this is only the third time this year that Ole Miss has been held scoreless in the first half and of course the half was not over yet the only other two times it happened to him was against Georgia and Alabama both resulting in losses 59 seconds remaining until halftime Lofton being chased by Freddie Nunn the pitch at the last moment and a first down in the hands of Randy Jones Barry Wilbin tracks him down but an excellent play by Lofton holding the ball to a without question the last possible moment. And a uh, unbalanced line that time by the Air Force Academy. 
You can see Lauthan starting to head upfield, and he sees there's no daylight there. <laughs> Pitches the ball back to Jones, who was able to have speed enough to turn the corner and make the first down before being driven out of bounds. The clock stops with 52 seconds to play until halftime. Jerry Rose made a fine block in the last play to spring Randy Jones for the game. And a first down from the Air Force 43-yard line. Inside handoff, maybe a yard or two. To John Kirshner, Bob Blakemore, and Terry Williamson combining for Ole Miss. And Ole Miss, uh, I believe, is going to take another timeout no, here. That's an official's time. Or the official's timeout. It's an Air Force player hurt. And I believe it's the ball carrier, John Kirshner. Kirshner limped off the field earlier in this half with, uh, with an injury. And he's being uh, tended to here. Looks as though he's got some kind of an ankle, but uh, probably will be able to shake it off. When you're playing fullback uh, on a wishbone or a flexbone team, you get hit every time you come over the ball because somebody's always assigned to hit you. And the better fake you make, the harder you get hit. Kirshner injured his ankle in the San Diego State game a week ago. Ted Sundquist replaces Kirshner at fullback for Air Force. Lightning uh, continues to light up the sky over Shreveport. We come to almost 30 seconds to go before the end of the first half. Lappin still has it. Loose ball, and Ole Miss has got it. Thomas Hubbard, I believe, is the man that came up with the fumble recovery with 24 seconds to go until halftime. We talked at the start of the game how Air Force was one of the rare teams running option football that didn't fumble the ball. But you can see the pass that time by Lawton was behind Brown. He really did not have a good chance to get it. He might have had the ball not been so slippery. The pitch is just a little bit too far behind him. Couldn't slow down, couldn't make the catch. The fumble is recovered by Old Miss. Look how shiny the ball is, but it's wet even it's as wet. he pitches it. That's right. First down, Old Miss at the 42 of Air Force with 24 seconds to go until halftime. Powell looking to put it upstairs. Makes the reception inside the 30. That is Jamie Holder. Stops the clock with 18 seconds to go until halftime. Ole Miss only has one timeout remaining. And they have 18 seconds. Andre Rogers, a sophomore flanker, will come in in place of Stephen Cunningham. Holder and Rogers go out to the left side. There is Rogers, number 29. Powell, five of nine with two interceptions for 61 yards. Cover defense by the Air Force, only three men rushing. Over the middle. McGee near the 20. And Air Force, or rather Ole Miss, quickly calls their last time out with nine seconds to go before the end of the half. And so it becomes decision time for Ole Miss. Do you try one more play? Do you go for the three points here? It's got to be a very quick pass <laughs> if they're going to try it. And it's got, of course, got to be into the end zone. Okay. I would assume if they're looking at the scoreboard that they're more likely to try the field goal because they're right square in the middle of the field in excellent position. I believe the field goal attempt will be off the foot of Neil Teven, number 92. Teven is three of four in this area between 30 and 39 yards away. He's had one blocked in this area as well. This will be a 39-yard field goal. And now all Air Force calls timeout to make Mr. Teven do a little thinking. They did that against uh, Notre Dame, and it proved to be very effective for them. We have nine seconds remaining until halftime. A reminder, one week from today, we'll be at the Florida Citrus Bowl in Orlando, Florida for an 8 o'clock Eastern time kickoff. I'll be there along with Lee Corso, former head coach at Indiana. We found out it was wiser to make money as a broadcaster than worrying about being fired as a coach. <laughs> Not nearly the same pressure. Yeah. <laughs> Big Saturday, Tennessee and Maryland in the Florida Citrus Bowl should be a good matchup. Two teams, eight and three, that play in tough conferences. Maryland, the, the uh, Atlantic Coast Conference champion. Tennessee, the great of America, Reggie White. Steven, a soccer-style kicker from 39 yards away. High snap. The kick is away, and Ole Miss is on the board just before halftime. 
The immediate thing to say would be that Ole Miss takes momentum into the locker room, and while they have scored, I'm not sure about momentum one way or the other. But they did make good on the fumble recovery and turned it into points. He really did not uh, hit the ball very well. It's kind of uh, right in the middle of the ball. It's very, very low, and he doesn't know whether he's got it in there or not, but uh, he's told by Moffitt, by golly, it's good. Yeah. And I know that even recognize he did not hit the ball very well and uh, when you don't hit it well as a kicker you wonder is it going to get there this one did 6-3 Falcons of Air Force leading the Rebels of Ole Miss the Independence Ball had sold 48,000 tickets fortunately the majority of those folks braved the weather to join us here tonight I tip my hat to them in spite of the thunder and the lightning yeah. Well, there's the lightning bolts on the helmet of the Air Force Academy, and I don't know if that drew the, uh, the, the uh, lightning bolts from above. Air Force will await a kickoff that I, I would believe would be a scribbler of sorts off the foot of Bill Smith. We only have four seconds remaining before the end of the half, and they don't want to risk a big return. That shoe looks pretty heavy. <laughs> He's almost limping on it. Kishniak is the man in the end zone, and he'll doubt it right there and not risk the return. No time off the clock because the clock does not start until the receiver handles the ball. He handled that one in the end zone, so it was dead ball in the end zone. Touchback. I would imagine that Air Force will just be satisfied leading it 6-3. to three. Maybe the quarterback keeper by Louthan just to run out the clock. But nevertheless, uh, the three points very important to Ole Miss. You want to come away with some points after a turnover, and they did it. Marty Laughlin, the quarterback of the Air Force Academy. Many records will have his name on it in the Air Force Media Guide book come next season. Just goes down on one knee, and the clock will run out. That is the end of the first half. At the eighth annual Independence Bowl football game here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Rain has been the story of the game, and the field goal kicking of both teams has also been the story of this game. Six to three, Air Force leading Ole Miss. Now let's go to Steve Grados with Billy Brewer. Coach Billy Brewer, Mississippi, assess the first half for us, please. Well, we got to we got to get the ball back from Air Force. They're keeping the ball too long. Marty Louthan is a great quarterback, and uh, he's demonstrated this when he's down here on the. Uh, Inside the five-yard line, he came out and made the crucial third down play, but uh, two interceptions hurt us. We had an opportunity, but we're back in the ball game now, and I think the second half we make some adjustments and uh, uh, we can do much better. What are you going to say to the boys? Well, we're just going to keep playing hard. Okay, Coach, thanks a lot. Well, that was Billy Brewer from Mississippi, and we'll be back with our halftime activities here at the Independence Bowl right after these messages. We're back at halftime of the Independence Bowl football game here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Air Force leading Ole Miss by the score of 6-3. to three. I'm Howard David along with head coach Bud Wilkinson and Steve Grad, who's down on the sidelines. Hopefully he can get rid of all that mud right, off, his, right. off the bags we got wrapped around his feet and he'll be okay. Your assessment of the first half. Well, Air Force moved the ball very well the first three times they had it, but they lacked the ability to put it in the end zone, but they did have the two field goals. And then we've been talking about they're one of the option teams that doesn't fumble the ball. Their last two possessions, they fumbled it. And the Air Force, of course, allowed one of those to be turned into a field goal by Ole Miss, and that makes the score 6-3. to three. You're watching the uh, Air Force Drum and Bugle Corps here at halftime of the Independence Ball in Shreveport, Louisiana. Just one of the two bands that we will see before uh, the conclusion of our halftime festivities. Danny Thomas won the Omar Bradley a Spirit of Independence Award, a well-deserved honor for our hard-working American that's done an awful lot for uh, St. Jude's Hospital, and he succeeds Art Linkletter, who was, uh, has done so much, John Wayne, Bob Hope, Paul Harvey, and, of course, General Bradley. And the Exchange Club has dedicated their Shrine of Liberty again. It's part now of the Independence Bowl Stadium here. All right, as we take a look at the... Uh, Air Force Drum and Bugle Corps here at halftime. Let's go now to our colleague, Dwayne Dow, 
who's standing by in Ms. Lou Network Television Control. Hello, everybody. It's halftime at Shreveport, Louisiana at the Independence Bowl. I'm Dwayne Dow at Ms. Lou Television Network Control. And now it's time for the 1983 Bowl Games Report, brought to you by SportsStream, the fast-acting, pain-relieving rub that smells great. We're going to preview some of the top games during this bowl season, many of which you'll see on these same stations on the Mislu Television Network. And this first one you're going to see on Mislu, and it should be a dandy as we take a look at the Florida Citrus Bowl. What a matchup in Orlando, Florida, as it's going to be Tennessee versus Maryland. Maryland led by quarterback Boomer Esiason, a left-hander who likes to play with reckless abandon. Tennessee, a strong defensive team. Key down lineman for the Volunteers is Reggie White. White and his teammates will be trying to put the rush on Boomer Esiason. This next bowl game doesn't have a long history, but have there been exciting moments in the short history of the Holiday Bowl in San Diego? Thrill after thrill in this game in recent years, and Brigham Young has been there for every Holiday Bowl. Brigham Young is back this season, led by Steve Young, the brilliant quarterback who has thrown for a national record 3,902 yards this year. Brigham Young's foe, Missouri. Missouri has Marlon Adler. He came to Missouri without a football scholarship, tried out for the team, made it, and this year was the seventh leading passer in the United States. A great sports tradition in America is the Blue Bonnet Bowl in the Houston Astrodome on New Year's Eve. And those of us in the Mizzou Television Network crew are really looking forward to it. Let's check this New Year's Eve and the Blue Bonnet Bowl matchup. It'll be the Oklahoma State Cowboys who made it without their star runner, Ernest Anderson, who was out much of the year injured. But Anderson's replacement, Sean Jones, wound up 20th in the nation in rushing. Oklahoma State's foe is surprising Baylor. Baylor alternates quarterbacks throughout the game. Cody Carlson, a freshman, and Tom Mickey, a veteran. Next, we'll take a look at the big four bowl games to be played this season on the second day of January. First, this timeout for SportsStream. Look at the big four bowl games on the second day of January. First, starting with the Cotton Bowl in Dallas. It is Texas, 11 wins, no losses. Number two ranked team in the nation. Best defensive college football team in America versus Georgia. Nine wins, one loss, one tie. Another solid defensive team. A team that has had a great year, even without Herschel Walker. And now a look at the big one in Miami, Florida on New Year's night. The Orange Bowl featuring the number one team in the nation, going for the national championship. The Nebraska Cornhuskers, 11 wins and no losses, with Mike Rozier, one of the finest college football players in America, averaging 179 yards rushing per game, a national record 29 touchdowns this season. But Nebraska's foe is a good one. Miami, 10 wins, one loss, and one of the best defensive teams in the country. Every year around New Year's, the people of New Orleans take great pride in the pageantry and fun surrounding the Sugar Bowl. Let's take a look at this year's Sugar Bowl matchup. It's going to be Auburn with its wishbone attack, featuring the sophomore runner Bo Jackson and a strong defense going against Michigan. The Wolverines have their option attack featuring quarterback Steve Smith and some of the best offensive linemen in the country, led by the great Stephon Humphrey. And now let's take a look at the granddaddy of them all. In Pasadena, California, the Rose Bowl. The Big Ten against the Pacific Ten. This year, it's going to be Illinois. The first team in history to win nine straight games in the Big Ten season with a stifling defense and an excellent quarterback in Jack Trudeau. Illinois playing UCLA with an outstanding quarterback, Rick Neuheisel, the fifth leading passer in the United States. So that's a look at some of this season's major bowl games. We hope you enjoyed it. Back with more after these messages from your local station. Welcome back to halftime here at the Independence Bowl. 
We're watching the Ole Miss Pride of the South Band, the Rebel Band. It's six to three with Air Force leading. I'm Steve Grant. Welcome back. And this man really needs no introduction. You recognize him, Danny Thomas, who has won the coveted Spirit of Independence Award here at the Independence Bowl. And Danny, congratulations on this very important award. Thank you, Steve. It is an important one, and especially since I knew the general rather well and entertained him during the war with the USO and all. And, and then after all these years to receive an award in the name of Omar Bradley as great five-star general is a great thrill. And of course, the Independence Bowl and the word independence stands for everything that I've stood for all of my life and America and I love it and I teach the young to love it and put the flag out on the holidays and salute it and it's quite sophisticated to do that. You know, you're in if you do that. And so anyway, at college commencements and high school things, I, I always preach that gospel of America and so on. And I they call me a big cornball, but... I always say, you know, the Bible says the meek shall inherit the earth. That's Lawrence Welk and me, so <laughs> a couple of real cornballs. <laughs> well, I'll tell you, also your outstanding work at St. Jude's Hospital is, is much to be credited. I guess that's what the award is all about. It's for the humanities. And St. Jude Children's Research Hospital in Memphis, Tennessee is doing a miraculous job, a fantastic job. We're over 50% over now, five-year cure rate in, in acute lymphocytic leukemia and about 80 90% in Hodgkin's and the eye cancer and the bone cancer and the nerve cell cancer, uh, neuroblastoma, they're doing a great job. And this information is being disseminated not only in our country, but all over the world. And uh, we're very proud of it. Danny, can I get you a, a quick joke? A quick joke, real oh, quick. Oh, no <laughs> quick joke. <laughs> Danny, one of the greatest storytellers ever. I don't, I don't tell quick ones, they take forever. <laughs> Well, unfortunately, we have to go to a break now, but we'd like to thank and congratulate Danny Thomas again for being up here after getting the Spirit of Independence thank Award. Thank you, Steve. I'm very proud of the award, and I'm certainly proud of this great city and all of these marvelous fans that you can hear in the background that's just enjoying a great game. All right, Danny, thank you. And we'll be back to the Independence Bowl game right after these messages from your local stations. They've made 115 yards rushing, only 39 passing. Air Force, which came into the ball game with a reputation of not turning it over too much, has turned it over twice thus far. The last two times, and you've got to feel it. It gives Mississippi a great feeling in the halftime in the locker room of confidence because they were in a position defensively. The first three times that Air Force had the ball, they really did march it out. They couldn't score a touchdown, but they moved it for a lot of yards, and the last two times they've had it, forced fumbles have been forced. In five of, their, of Ole Miss's victories, they were behind at halftime. They are behind again at halftime, 6-3. to three. Again, the field goals have dominated the game, as we figured they might because of the condition of the field. Here's a look at the Air Force Falcon, uh, one of many. Uh, the the, the uh, first team Falcon is Glacier. That is not Glacier. Glacier is all white. Well, this one is a tough one. <laughs> He's out here in this kind of weather. There's a man <laughs> with a lot of courage. The guy was holding him with that he heavy, thick leather glove to keep him in tow. Both of these schools, Air Force Academy, which has sported, I believe, 25 Rhodes Scholars, and Old Miss, which has had a long range of uh, academic excellence, have a message for you. Capitalizing on the new technologies as we help our 12,000 students attain career-oriented educations. Inside the walls of this beautiful old southern campus, the new horizons of computers, communications, and satellite technology are being explored. We are also breaking new ground culturally. B.B. King's recent contribution of his personal record collection to Ole Miss now helps make the school a national center for the study of blues. Ole Miss is committed to the education and to the success of all of our students. Located just north of Colorado Springs, Colorado, with an enrollment of 4,400 young men and women, the primary purpose of the Air Force Academy is to motivate and prepare career officers for the United States Air Force. All cadets participate in a demanding four-year program of academic studies, leadership and military training, athletics, and spiritual development. This balanced curriculum provides the broad professional foundation cadets will need as Air Force officers to meet the challenges of the 21st century. That's uh, Tracy Jackson, who is the chairman of the 1983 Independence Bowl. Before I forget, Old Miss uh, has a few Rhodes Scholar winners of their own. They've had 22 Rhodes Scholars selected at Old Miss, placing the university in the top ranks of all American institutions, 16th among all universities, 5th among the nation's state universities. We saw a message earlier from the exchange clubs. Hundreds of members of the National Exchange Club are in attendance at the Independence Bowl today. First exchange club founded in 1911 in Detroit, Michigan. 
And these Exchange Club members are business and professional men whose purpose is the exchanging of ideas and dedicating themselves to community service. Tracy Jackson, who is the chairman of the 1983 Independence Bowl and a, and a friend, former broadcaster, he uh, went the route, the right route, get out of this business and go do something right. <laughs> and he's done it very well. Some of the members that have done so well for the Independence Bowl, Dr. Milton Chapman, Ken Hanna, and Laurie Glassell, and of course, without Laurie, a lot of these things don't happen. We are at halftime of the Independence Bowl. Air Force leading Ole Miss by the score of 6-3. to three. And we'll be back with the second half of tonight's Independence Bowl in just a moment. All right, let's go down to Steve Pratt, who's standing by with Ken Hatfield of the Air Force. Ken, you got a three-point lead in this monsoon. What'd you tell your team for halftime? Well, we just tried to make our normal corrections we do and told them to try to hold on the ball. We're missing our read on our option a lot, and if we just stay with it and keep running the basic option, I think we'll be all right. Are they confident they can hold on? We're confident we can hold on and get the right read, and our defense is doing a good job stopping them the run. We let them have too much on the pass. We'll be ready to play. Ken Hatfield, Air Force coach, good luck in the second half. Thank you very much. Okay, Steve Grad, and our thanks to Ken Hatfield and Billy Brewer for all of the um, – support they have given us in the days we have been here in Shreveport, Louisiana. There are the receivers for Air Force. They have elected to receive in the start of the second half, and Air Force is elected to take the wind here in the third quarter, blowing from the south. Greg Pashishniak will be standing back and awaiting the kick from this man, Bill Smith, number seven. Six to three, Air Force. Three field goals in the game. Two by Sean Pavlich. And one by Tevens of Ole Miss. The kickoff goes into the end zone. They'll bring it out to the 20-yard line. Total yardage in the first half, 154 yards for Air Force, 145 for Ole Miss. Leading rusher in the ball game, Buford McGee of Ole Miss with 63 net yards. There's the uh, statistical recap of the first half. 16 minutes and 42 seconds of time of possession for Air Force, 13-18 Ole Miss, bud. Two fumble recoveries by Old Miss and uh, two pass interceptions by the Air Force. Turnovers even at two and two. Mike Kirby comes out wide to the right side. Air Force operating, of course, out of that wishbone from the 20-yard line. A five-man Old Miss front. Laufen still has it. Gets four yards to the 24-yard line. Met by Dwayne Nesmith and Freddie Nunn. Freddie Nunn has played a whale of a ball game with still a half to go. He's a very quick man to be as large as he is. He's 6'4", 223 pounds, has great balance, and is reading the options of the Air Force very well. Marty Louthan, who only averages throwing 10 passes per ball game, thus far tonight has thrown three. Kirby this time goes to the left. Second down and six for Air Force from their own 24. Up inside, this is Kirshner across the 35. Kirshner, who was nicked up in the first half, was still smarting from an ankle injury. This is a long, long ride. You can see how Lawson let him have the ball for a long time, then appeared he was going to bring it out, and the Mississippi defense went for the quarterback. Lawson opened it up for Kirshner. A gain out to the 38-yard line and a first down. Tom Coleman in the game as a wide receiver replacing Mike Kirby. Split out to the left side. Third quarter of play at the Independence Bowl with 13.55 remaining. Third quarter. Louthan might have been beyond the line of scrimmage when he threw the ball. But no flags. Reception is caught. Is made, rather, near midfield. Looked like Lafton was beyond the line of scrimmage, but they didn't throw the flag. And you get some idea of Lafton's athletic ability when you see him go down the line of scrimmage, give a little ground, then on the dead run, throw it left-handed, and have it right on target. A gain of 12 on the play and a first down. Tom Coleman, number 92, coming to the right side. Ball just inside, Mississippi side of the 50-yard line. And a 6-3 to three Air Force lead. Howard David along with Bud Wilkinson and Steve Grad. Here in Shreveport, Lauthan, no way. Thomas Hubbard made sure. The tackle leader of Old Miss comes up with the play that time. He came from the blind side, uh, Lauthan looking to the outside, but he doesn't look behind him because 
obviously that's impossible. Hubbard had speed enough to pick him up from behind to make the tackle. Johnny Armstrong is in at strong safety for Ole Miss, wearing number four. Jody Simmons in the game and left half for all for Air Force in place of Mike Brown. Kirby in the game, wide to the left side. The tight end, Jerry Rose, lined up on the right. Louthen with the pitch. Mike Brown near the 40-yard line. Tackled by Eric Truitt, the left quarterback, about a yard shy of a first down. And once again, we got a marvelous block by Jones, number 15. He's averaged 6.5 yards a carry, but he really does an excellent job. Take a look at uh, number 37 here. He's isolated. That's Hubbard. And you can see him defeating the guard, moving over, defeating the halfback coming out, chasing the play, and getting in on the tackle. Great movement, great speed. And a nice, happy field, too. And a nice piece of work by our camera people. In a difficult night. Laughing on the pitch at the last moment to Jones. Looking for first down yardage. He'll be short. Barry Wilburn chased him down. And Freddie Nunn combining. That's going to bring up a fourth down. And Air Force does like to go for it on fourth down short yardage. I don't know whether they will this time, but all through the season they have. Let's take a little look at Hubbard here. You can see him sliding off of Brown's block, then moving to the outside, pursuing again, and being in on the tackle. A very determined football player. Also in on the play, Barry Wilburn and Hubbard. They're going for it on fourth down on the long two. And it is Bart Weiss, the quarterback, who comes in for the one play, and he gets a first down. Bart Weiss, a sophomore. Six foot tall, only 165 pounds, and he gets a first down. That was the entire second offensive team. They moved in like the punting team. Weiss kept the ball, rolled to the outside, got an excellent block, turned up field, picked up an important fight of vital first down for the Air Force. That's it. Marty Louthen comes back into the game. Randy Jones goes out, replaced by Jody Simmons. Coleman comes out wide to the right side. For Air Force, they have it first down at the Ole Miss 31-yard line. Nobody has crossed the goal line thus far tonight. It's a 6-3 Air Force lead. All field goals. Louthen, the pitch to Brown. He makes yardage when it seemed like he was going to be dropped for no game. Hit very hard by Townsend, though. Excellent tackle. And you can see the mud splashing in Brown's eyes. Barry Wilburn combining with Andre Townsend on the stop. Take a look at it from ground level here. You can see Louthen turning upfield. Then at the last minute, making a perfect pitch out to Brown, who stops. Cuts back. You can see his feet sliding out from under him. Lost his footing, but he had enough balance to turn it up inside. Pick up a gain on the play before the mud was water splashed in his eyes. Mike Kirby back in the game as Coleman goes out with a play from the sidelines. Laughlin still has it again. The pitch at the uh, 11th hour to Simmons. Simmons 20, 15, inside the 15, near the 13. Chased down by the nose guard, Terry Williamson. Mike Kirby. Brown with a good block on the play. Coach Hatfield said at halftime in the interview that uh, we weren't reading our keys well enough in the first half, but so far in this drive, they've read them perfectly. That's Big Terry Williamson, 6'1", 286 pounds. That is a lot of beef. And you can see the eyes closed and brown as the water splashes in his eyes on the play prior to the last one. First down and 10 for Air Force at the 13-yard line. Excellent recovery and a quick reaction by Ole Miss. Freddie Nunn and Matthew Lovelady. Defensively across the line, Ole Miss weighing 249 pounds average compared to 239 pounds on the offensive line of Air Force. We look Randy at Coach Jones. Hatfield getting ready to send Jones in. He's got a play that he wants called. Simmons comes out. Jones is in. A loss on the play of three yards. It's second down and 13. Air Force on the 16-yard line of Ole Miss. Third quarter of play with 9.35 remaining, and Air Force leading at 6-3. This is Mike Brown. Now he gets yardage when it looks like he's going nowhere. Andre Townsend managed to get him from behind. Beautiful run, though. Two men missed him, and when you don't have good footing, it's remarkable to be able to 
have balance enough to cut back and make the play that he just did. Let's take a look at it again, and we can see the pitch by Louthen. The Jones fell down on the play, and he's able to put the brakes on, let two Mississippi men go to the outside before he's brought down. Very nice tackle by Townsend. Kirby goes out wide to the left side. It's a third and nine play coming up for Air Force on the 12-yard line of Ole Miss. They go to the short side. Not much. Inside the 10, it'll bring up fourth down. Terry Williamson stops John Kirshner. It's going to be fourth down and nine for Air Force from the 11-yard line, and that will mark the entry of Sean Pavlich, who's already connected twice tonight. Pavlich, the leading scorer in Air Force history. Joe Hall, who is in the secondary for Ole Miss, has two blocked field goals this year. We got to watch for him. Zollinger to hold. The kick is away, and it is good. Great job by the holder. The ball was low snap. He fumbled it, picked it up, got it on the tee with great timing. So Air Force ups the count to 9-3 to three with 7.59 to play until the end of the third quarter from the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. Carlos, Carlos Mateos to kick off for Air Force. Lee Davis will be back deep to uh, take the kickoff of this man, Carlos Mateos. The wide man is Davis on the right, or the deep man, Andre Rogers, number 29 on the left side of your picture and Stephen Cunningham on the right side. Don't forget, next week in Orlando, Florida, we'll bring you the Florida Citrus Bowl over many of these same stations. Here's truly Howard David along with Lee Corso. Good be with you. Short kickoff. This will be Rogers. Let's it go through. Picked up by Davis at the six. Davis 20, 25, and didn't have enough room to turn it upfield. The rain comes down in droves again here in Shreveport. It's been raining all night. Now let's get down to a very wet Steve Brad. Well, we just had to dodge that play, Howard. This is Scott Wackenheim behind me. He has a shoulder injury. Jim Comboy, the trainer, is working on him. We'll keep you posted on uh, whether he can get back in the game, but they're working on his left shoulder. And luckily, this is the only injury we have to report so far, and hopefully he can get back in there. We'll report later on. Okay, Steve, thank you. Now, you'll notice Ole Miss is wearing red numerals. We'll elaborate on that a little bit later on. We have 7.53 remaining third quarter. Air Force leading Ole Miss by the score of 9-3 to three at the Independence Bowl. I wonder if he got that mop wet. The Ole Miss is wearing red numeral jerseys. They changed in the locker room at halftime. Obviously, same numbers. First down, Ole Miss. Larry Nicholas makes the tackle on the play on Buford McGee. McGee is a strong, very well-balanced runner. It doesn't appear to be very low as he comes in there almost standing straight up, but he's got great strength, even though he's not in what I call a good hitting position. Buford McGee will be participating in an all-star game later on this month in the blue-gray game in Montgomery, Alabama. A game of three on the play, second and seven for Old Miss from their own 30-yard line. Powell wants to go upstairs, throwing it on the run and connecting across the 35-yard line to Timmy Moffitt. Looks to be good enough for a first down, or very close to a first down it is. A first down for Ole Miss. Moffitt is truly a class receiver. He runs his patterns beautifully. He can outmaneuver any one man that's playing against him. Moving to the left that time, Powell hit him right on the numbers. Up, Very interested spectator. I think he's a little wet. He can handle it better than most. <laughs> First and ten. Here's the draw to McGee. Picked up some yards, but an excellent play by Greg Zolliger, the free safety. He read it beautifully and was able to move up and help stop it for a very short gain. Second leading tackler on the team is number 16, Zolliger. McGee thus far, 16 carries for 70 yards in the ball game. 9 to 3 Air Force with 6.45 remaining third quarter. Second and seven for Old Miss Rebels. The option to McGee. Cut down at the 44-yard line. 
A fine open field play by Dwan Wilson and Chris Funk. Powell going down the line is a little bit uh, slower on the option than is Lawton when he goes down the line. Zondiger made first team all Western Athletic Conference. By the way, the Western Athletic Conference is the host, of course, for the Holiday Bowl. We'll bring it to you on December 23rd. Third down and four for Ole Miss at the 44-yard line of the Rebels. Howell. Incomplete. Pass intended for Timmy Moffitt. Dwan Wilson, the left cornerback, was over there. When you see that sideline, you can tell how wet it really is, and the Falcon is showing you how wet it is. <laughs> Get water off my wings. I want to fly. It's just like water <laughs> off a Falcon's back. Now, I wish I didn't say that. <laughs> Fourth down play for Ole Miss, and they'll bring the punting unit on, headed by Bill Smith. One man back is Kirby. He broke one punt today for 35 yards after a 50-yard punt by Smith. This is another good one. Sailing back deep, Kirby at the 5. Kirby to the 15, and down at the 19-yard line. Making the play for Ole Miss was Patrick Brown, number 22. And so we have five minutes, 47 seconds left to play in the third quarter. A 51-yard punt by Billy Smith. Air Force maintaining a six-point lead. They lead it 9-3. We'll return to the Independence Bowl here at Shreveport. Howard David along with Bud Wilkinson and Steve Brad here in Shreveport at the Independence Bowl. The first game of the second season, if you will, in college football. Air Force will have it. They lead 9-3. They'll have it first and 10 at their own 19-yard line. Now there's a couple of guys whose elevator does not go all the way to the top floor. Kirby comes out wide to the right side. Now from the quarterback. Great handoff to Mike Brown. Across the 20-yard line. Lee Cole, the first man to get to him. Interesting story about Lee Cole. At halftime of the Mississippi State game with Ole Miss trailing, I believe, 17-0, he gave the team a pep talk in the locker room. It seemed to get them fired up. They won the ball game and got a trip to a bowl game. When you come off 17 points, 7 to zip at halftime, it's very tough to be good in the locker room. They had to be marvelous. <laughs> Academy Award. Kirby wide right. Second down and eight Air Force. They're on 22-yard line. Excellent play defensively by Dwight Bingham. Number 89, 6'6", 234-pound junior. And it appears that uh, Ole Miss is getting an extra man in their defensive front by uh, shooting a linebacker. One more man, and uh, you can't pick them all up. Mike Fitzsimmons comes out on the defensive line. But again, you can see the fake and then the late ride, but the great charge that time by Bingham did not give Laufen time to execute the option play. Johnny Armstrong comes in on the secondary. Laufen looking for room, slips down at the 25-yard line and will bring up a fourth down play. Eric Truitt was right there to defend. And it will bring up a fourth down. Very good defensive series that time for Mississippi. Previous possession by the Air Force, they drove 70 yards, couldn't score, but couldn't score a touchdown, but did kick the field goal. This time, no first down. Jeff Kubiak will come in for his second punt of the evening. He'll be kicking to Tim Moffitt or Barry Wilburn. Old Miss should get fairly decent field position out of this. Kubiak, who came into the game averaging 43 yards per kick. Good snap from center. And he shanked it. Air Force will give the ball to Ole Miss in great field position, not just good field position, inside the 45-yard line. We had the first half interview, Steve and Kubiak. He said he was worried about his footing, and I think that uh, that's why he shanked that ball. He slipped. It was only a 19-yard punt. And so we have 3.34 remaining in the third quarter. Air Force with a 9-3 lead, but Ole Miss beginning to threaten right here. They'll have it at their own 40, at the Air Force 42-yard line when we return. 
I must tell you an interesting statistic. There were 47,820 tickets sold for this game tonight. 41,274 in the ballpark. Only 6,500 no-shows on a night like this. Tremendous tribute to the fans that have braved the weather. First and ten, Ole Miss, and Powell wants to go up top on first down, and he wants it all on one play. Almost a great reception by Timmy Moffitt. Extended himself to the fullest and almost came up with it. And you can see him saying to himself, I think I should have caught it. Given a good field, I believe he would have. Chuck Peterson was with him, but Moffitt had it just a little bit overthrown. Very difficult to make any kind of an adjustment when you're in the pattern here. That was the fake of the handoff to McGee, and you can see the ball just off his fingertips, but once again, dry ball, dry field. I believe he'd have made the catch. Second down and 10, Ole Miss and Powell again from the 42-yard line. A reception to the 37, but to Jamie Holder, but Tom Stanbury played him very well. 314 remaining third quarter. Air Force leading it by the score of 9 to 3. Well, this is a critical series for both teams. Third down coming up. About five yards to go. With an excellent field position. Ole Miss needs to capitalize on it. And of course, the Air Force just the opposite. We've got to stop them, keep them out of field goal range. Ole Miss had too many men on the field momentarily. They have to get two players off in a big hurry. Third down and five. Ole Miss at the 36-yard line. And there are penalty markers flying all over the place. Movement, I believe, against the uh, offensive line of Ole Miss. Illegal procedure is the call against the Rebels, and they'll step off five yards. When you have difficulty with your substitutions, it's very hard not to have something go wrong. Steve Grant standing by with Dwight Bingham, the defensive end of Ole Miss. Fired up, good sack. Thank you, thank you. Uh, you know, we're doing a good job, and Fred's doing a good job. I, I know I want to play, but, you know, he's doing such a good job. I got to let him do it, and I don't know. I'm so excited. The whole team is excited, and I think that overall we're doing a good job. We're going to win this game, I'm telling you. Well, you sure fired him up. Right thing. Third down play, old miss at the 41-yard line. A play fake by Powell. And the drop by Moffitt. He had it in his hands momentarily, but in fairness to Timmy Moffitt, it is a tough night to catch football that's thrown high. And when the footing is not solid, uh, you try to make the normally timed jump for the ball, and your feet slip out from under, and you just don't get the altitude you need. So they'll punt it away. Powell now 8 for 15 for 80 yards and two interceptions. Bill Smith to come in to punt for Ole Miss to Mike Kirby. Line of scrimmage, the 41-yard line, as he tries to angle it to the near sideline. He kicks it out of bounds. We'll see where they mark it. Inside the 15, I believe, perhaps the 10-yard line. That's exactly where it will be, the 10-yard line. So the Air Force holds tough defensively after Old Miss had gotten great field position at the beginning of the drive. A 31-yard punt. There's the old Rebel. Trying to get the Ole Miss Rebels rallied around. They trail it 9-3 with 2.13 to play third quarter. John Kirshner of uh, Air Force going to the Japan Bowl and the Hula Bowl. John Pavlich, the kicker, going to the Japan Bowl and the East-West Shrine game. Both first team, all WAC conference, two years in a row. Here's Marty Lauffen, number 11. And everything revolves around the senior quarterback. First and 10 at his own 10-yard line. The pitch to Brown. A gain of maybe two yards, and that's about all as Lee Cole, with good lateral pursuit, made the stop. It appears that the Ole Miss defense is getting used to looking at those options and that they're controlling all three of them much more effectively than they were able to do during the first half and then on the first drive of the second half. Old Miss plays, of course, in that tough Southeastern Conference. I believe seven teams are going to bowl games out of that conference. We'll have another SEC team a week from tonight as the Tennessee Volunteers meet Maryland. Second down and seven Air Force. First man through, I believe it was Kirshner. Terry Williamson made the stop of the play on John Kirshner, the senior fullback. And you have to begin to wonder when Lathan is going to 
start out to his right and then throw the ball back again to either the tight end or to one of the backs coming out of the backfield with a misdirection play. Well, Ken Hatfield mentioned that he might try a little misdirection. He told me in these words, he says, I'll be honest with you. <laughs> he said that a lot. All, all coaches are. <laughs> Third down and five. Air Force on their own 15-yard line. Laughing on the keeper. First down and more to the 25-yard line. Matthew Lovelady made the stop of the play. John Kirshner, the man that sprung him with a, with a nice block. Also, Lee Davis helping out in the secondary. And another big first down by the Air Force at the time they needed it. They were well backed up, but that first down gives them a little breathing room. So the Air Force now has it with a minute and 13 to play until the end of the third period. Louthen thus far, 18 carries, 66 yards for that man. Ken Hatfield, the head coach of the Air Force Academy. Oh, what a play. Oh, what a play. Tremendous play defensively by Bob Lakemore. The and junior at 6'2", 244. Once again, he shot the gap and was able to get to the quarterback before he could read any type of option. Here he comes right through that inside gap. Brought the ball off of Kirshner, keeping it himself, but then no time for anything else. Coleman goes out of the game at wide receiver for the Air Force, replaced by Mike Kirby. Second down and 12, the Falcons at their own 24-yard line. Kirshner up inside to the 30-yard line. Ken Hatfield mentioned yesterday in our production meeting, he said that he would try to get the ball more to Mike Brown, the left halfback. Brown is playing with a little bit of a groin pull, and even though he's been very quick, very agile, he has not had an opportunity to break anything on a field that's as wet and sloppy as this one. Mike Brown has carried the ball six times thus far tonight. That's the end of the third quarter. Air Force leading it by the score of 9-3 to three here at the Independence Bowl in Shreveport, Louisiana. While we're back at the Independence Bowl Stadium here in Shreveport, a reminder that March the 4th over many of these Miss Luke Television Network stations will bring you the Unidad LPGA Golf Tournament from Mesa Verde Country Club in Pasta Mesa, California. $300,000 in prize money. That is the third richest stop on the LPGA Tour, and all the greats will be there. Carter, Stevenson, the whole lot of them. Third quarter statistics, time of possession. Air Force now 28 minutes and nine seconds through three periods to Ole Miss' 1651. Total yardage, Air Force 249 yards, Ole Miss 168 yards. And 190 that on the ground, 198 to 51 yards throwing. They haven't tried to pass for quite some time. Air Force passing through the arm of Marty Laughlin, only five of six. Pitch to Randy Jones. Taken out of bounds across the 30-yard line by Jerry Stewart. Very quick reaction and quick pitch that time by Louthan. He was pressured but was able to get rid of the ball. That's going to bring up a fourth down play and Air Force, I doubt, will try anything tricky down at this end of the field. The line of scrimmage, the 33-yard line. Coming in to kick, Jeff Kubiak. Wilburn and Rogers are back. Great kick by Kubiak. This is Rogers at the 20. No place to go except down. Excellent downfield coverage. Paul Castanius makes the tackle on the play for the Air Force, and Ole Miss will put it in play first and 10 at their own 17 yard line. Excellent poise that time by Kubiak. The previous kick, as you recall, he shanked it for 19 yards. This time he really got a good hold on the ball and was able to kick it 47 yards with no return. Nine to three, the score, Air Force on top of Ole Miss as we begin the fourth quarter here in Shreveport. 47,000 some odd tickets were sold here at the Independence Bowl and in spite of the weather, and that has definitely been a major concern of the Independence Bowl committee, only 6,500 no-shows, that is not too bad. 
14-44, remaining in the ball game. 9-3 Air Force, Old Miss has it on their own 17-yard line. Humphrey, the fullback, and there's a marker on the play. Bowl-bound teams this year, Brigham Young and Notre Dame, while Old Miss has played three bowl-bound teams, Alabama, Georgia, and Tennessee. The nose guard, Nicholas, that time made a very fine adjustment, a very fine tackle. The, uh, thing is Bring it back to the 13-yard line. Illegal procedure is the call against the Rebels of Ole Miss. Before the season began, the prognosticators, experts, what have you, picked Ole Miss to win one ball game. They were a little short in their prediction. They won six, including the last five in a row. Four and two in the Southeast Conference and a tough conference. First down and 15, this is Powell. Throwing it on the run, and it is overthrown. Pass intended for Andre Rogers. Let's go down to Steve Grad. These, these cheerleaders, these women cheerleaders, are probably the only ones who are fighter pilot trainees. How do you find time for both learning how to fly a jet and a cheerlead? Well, it's good. It's really hard to find time, but um, cheerleading helps keep your spirits up, and it's really important at school. It's everything so hard. Most girls, when they're growing up, want to be cheerleaders, but being fighter pilots, too, that's something. <laughs> Buford McGee on the draw gets across the 15, but Chris Funk was right there. They did not fool the defensive team at all of the Air Force Academy on the play. They expected the draw. They didn't penetrate. They were able to slide over and make the tackle. Steve Joyner comes in as a tight end for Ole Miss, replaces Dan Boyce. And Stephen Cunningham comes out, replaced by Andre Rogers. Moffitt to the right side. Third down and 11, Ole Miss. Almost caught by Moffitt. And an excellent play by Carl Gidenay and Chuck Peterson. Gidenay cut right in front of the intended receiver and perhaps took his eye off the ball just momentarily. Gidenay has got a great sense of the passing lanes. Moves back in and Lincoln's had five interceptions this season. Has broken up a number of passes. An excellent all-around athlete. As Mike Kirby in single safety for the Air Force to await the punt of Bill Smith. The Falcons should get decent field position out of this exchange. Fourth down at the 16-yard line. A good snap from center. Kirby lets it roll dead and stops around the 42-yard line. And so with the Air Force Academy leading it 9 to 3, 13-43 to play third quarter here at the end of, or fourth quarter at the Independence Bowl here in Shreveport, Louisiana. Third, we'll be bringing you the Holiday Bowl over many of these same stations. The Brigham Young Cougars, 10 and 1 on the season, ranked in the top 10. Head coach Lavelle Edwards against Warren Powers, Missouri Tigers. Should be a tough one. Friday, December the 23rd. Check your local listings for time and station. And a power team uh, against one of the great passing teams in college football. First and 10, Air Force, their own 42-yard line. They lead it by six. Mike Brown, Mike Brown down the sidelines. Mike Brown, 30, he could go all the way. Needs one more block. He won't get it, but he breaks it all the way to the 15-yard line. Chased down by Lee Davis. And again, a marvelous block by Jones. He knocked Truett down totally and gave Brown an opportunity to turn the corner. Let's take a look at it. Run. Let's see it again. You can see Louthan making the great fake. Kirshner carrying it out inside. The quick pitch. And there's the marvelous block just to the middle of the screen. Brown gets turned upfield. Cuts back. He's very, very quick. He doesn't have what you call breakaway speed, but his quickness more than makes up for that. And he's troubled a little bit tonight by a groin pull also. There's that great block. Brown gets turned upfield. Cuts it back. Gains 43 yards on the play. Now you know why he led the nation in yards per carry, 8.5 yards per carry, and you said you couldn't believe anybody could have that for a whole season. Well, this uh, backfield, uh, Louthan has averaged 5.3 yards a carry, <coughs> Kirshner 5.6, Jones 6.5, so they're all averaging better than five yards a try. Well, Ken Hatfield said he wanted to get the ball in Mike Brown's hands more. Now you know why. He's carried the ball 11 times for 87 yards. He's right on target, isn't he? <laughs> really is, and they got that procedure penalty, and again, they start now first and 15 instead of first and 10. Ball at the 21-yard line of Ole Miss. Air Force making their fifth trip to a bowl game. Last year, they played at the Hall of Fame Bowl, played in the Holiday Bowl in 82. 
Well, correction, they played in the Hall of Fame Bowl in 82, the Sugar Bowl in 1970. Straight ahead, Kirshner inside the 15-yard line. Correction, that is Ted Sundquist. Tackled by Barry Wilburn. Close to another first down for the Air Force. And a beautiful read that time by Laufen. Letting Sundquist keep the ball. You can see him. He saw that the penetration of the tackle was coming to him. Handed it off to Sundquist, who broke clean behind the linebackers. Very close to the first down. Third and one. Old Miss has been Second a bowl. And one, sorry. Old Miss has been a bowl games uh, often. 20 previous times. That's Legendary six. coach Johnny Vaught did a heck of a job at Ole Miss. Laufen inside the five to the four. And a big first down coming off that procedure penalty. Love Lady and Nesmith made the stop for Ole Miss, and now Air Force will have it first and goal at the four-yard line with 12.05 remaining in the fourth quarter, and Air Force leading it 9-3. to three. And Momentarily, the rain has stopped, so they've got a little bit better footing than they're yeah. used to in the first three quarters of the game. Coleman will go out wide to the right side. Draw single coverage. You have to believe that Air Force will keep it on the ground inside the five. Here's a whistle blown before the play and then a tackle which will necessitate a penalty. Unnecessary roughness on will be charged. It's difficult to read the number from here, but I believe it might be Blakemore or Wilburn. First, the penalty you probably will go against Air Force, the first one. Second one will definitely go against Ole Miss. Very unusual formation that time by Air Force. They were unbalanced line from the hash mark into the sidelines with the right receiver into the narrow side of the field. Normally you have your wide receivers to the wide side of the field to use the field from sideline to sideline. Got an illegal procedure call against Air Force. And then a personal foul against Ole Miss, which everybody in the stadium saw. We see the solid hits right there. After it was all over, the whistle had blown. The offsetting penalties uh, put the ball back where it originally began. And mark the yards off for the procedure call against Air Force of five yards. And then they will mark off the unnecessary roughness call against Barry Wilburn, half the distance to the goal inside the five. And it's back where it was to begin with. On the fourth yard line. Why even bother calling it? Maybe the referee needed some air time. <laughs> he got it. <laughs> he got it. We have 11.33 remaining in the ball game. Air Force is leading at 9-3. Four field goals in the game thus far. Old Miss has only averaged 46 yards per game in penalties. Same formation. Unbalanced to the narrow side of the field. Latham didn't like something. I think he wants the ball changed. The ball might be too wet. Don Overdick, the center, complaining about it. Get rid of the ball, bring in a new one. That's smart. It's easy to see why these two schools have had so many road scuttles. I believe 45 or 47 between them. And Ole Miss has had a few Miss Americas. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. <laughs> see what the field is like by looking at the shoes and the socks of the Ole Miss player. First down and goal for Air Force at the four-yard line. Lofton, maybe to the three. Good pursuit by Dwayne Nesmith and Joe Hall. And will bring up the second down. Billy Brewer, the head coach. Very big at Ole Miss. series for his team. Men. And Ken Hatfield is listening very intently to what the press box is telling him. Well, Brewer played in a couple of bowl games in his day. I believe he played in three. Second and goal at the three-yard line. Inside to Kirshner. Short of the goal line, I believe, although Air Force is signaling touchdown. I don't believe he got in. Sunquist, rather. Blakemore made the tackle. Unbalanced line to the wide side of the field that time. A total change of offensive strategy related to the formation. 
Williamson comes in at the nose, and Dwayne Nesmith comes out. The reason for the unbalanced line is to force the defensive men to shift to the unbalanced side, which they must do, and that changes their normal read because the timing changes. The 25-second clock within five seconds of expiring. Three. They get it off in time. Lauthen on the keeper to the one, and that's all. Going to be fourth and goal. Lee Cole made the stop. Air Force crowd is chanting to go for it on fourth and goal. Now you're ahead by six with 9 9 remaining. <laughs> what do you do? Do you try you to block it? You do not listen to the Air Force crowd. <laughs> Of course, the man with the headsets is not Ken Hadfield, the head coach. He's one of the assistant coaches. They bring in another tight end. Very or rather, a wide receiver, Tom Coleman, with a play from the sidelines. This is confidence in your offensive team. It sure is. They've got to get the surge off the ball. Quarterback sneak left, and I don't think he made it. He did not make it. They stopped him inside the one-yard line. A tremendous surge defensively by the Ole Miss Rebels. Terry Williamson and Lee Cole leading the charge in the middle. That might be the thing that can get Ole Miss fired up. But they have 99 and a half yards of real estate to negotiate. Very, very unusual strategy. If they score, it sounds awfully good, but you can see that he did not quite get it into the end zone. The line was not able to knock the Ole Miss people back. 8.40 remaining in the fourth quarter. Air Force leading it 9-3 as Ole Miss will have the ball at the half-yard line. Air Force, had, Air Force had the ball for five minutes and three seconds. Eight plays, 67 yards, and couldn't punch it in. So Ole Miss will start out at their own half-yard line, if you will, with still 8.40 to play, and you wonder if Air Force made a tactical mistake by not kicking the field goal, putting them up by nine points. Well, I think that they believe that if they don't score, they've got them backed up, and their defense has been playing very well. They'll get the ball back again soon, but uh, very honestly, I would have gone for the field goal. <laughs> Better be safe than sorry, huh? Great right ahead. Good job, Steve Kelly! Arthur Humphrey. Chris Funk and Larry Nicholas combining on the stop. Stephen Cunningham in the game for Ole Miss. Let's go to Steve Grad. With me is Terry Williamson, the man who was right in the center of that goal line stand. You plugged it up beautifully, Terry. Yeah, as you know, as low as they were coming out, we knew we had to get just as low as they was to come out, you know, to clog that up because they were trying to run the middle. And, you know, they've been double teaming me, so they left kind of fifth stones open. Nice job. Second down. McGee, maybe a yard. And you could see Powell check signals there. He thought he could make the trap play break, but uh, Air Force read the play beautifully, did not go for the trap, and very short game. Good play by Charlie Heath and Steve Kelly on the combination tackle, 7.49 remaining in the fourth quarter, 9-3 to three Air Force. And this the lead lifter for the bowl game season, the 1983 Independence Bowl. Third down and about eight. Big play coming up for both sides. Powell in the end zone. And the connection across the 15 and a first down to Timmy Moffitt. Talk about a big play receiver. That's as big a play as you will find thus far tonight. And again, a marvelous throw by Powell over the corner back. Getting it beyond the first cover in front of the second cover and throwing it on the run, which is extremely difficult to do. You can see it over the corner man, almost broken. If he had a little more field, he could have gotten turned up field and made a big, big play. 17 yards in the pickup and a first down for Ole Miss at the 20 yard line with seven minutes, 24 seconds remaining in the ball game. Wide side of the field is to the left. Humphrey and McGee, the setbacks. The end around. And the option pass for a moment, looking to throw the ball, was Frank Porter. Steve Kelly was watching him all the way and dropped him for no gain. A matter of fact, a big loss. I thought they had the play set up quite well. Well, but, correction, uh, that was Kent Austin. He was a quarterback that did play for them until Kelly took over. Ken Austin is in at quarterback, but the option pass was on the reverse to Frank Porter.
Kelly Powell, look at a throw. And a great reception by Timmy Moffitt. And another first down. Go, Rose, go! Take of the draw play to try to freeze the linebackers. Plenty of time. He takes a good shot as he gets rid of the ball, but Moffitt again has run that perfect pattern, breaking it off in front of the deep safety man, throwing the ball beautifully over the linebackers. Excellent touch, excellent pattern on the pass. My correction, Ken Austin was the man that threw that option pass. They changed his uniform number to here number 15. Here is Buford McGee across the 40-yard line. Jetané made the stop of the play. Bring up second down with less than, well, about 6.05 remaining. Fourth quarter and a 9-3 Air Force lead. Coming up next Saturday night, a week from tonight, I'll be joined by Lee Corso to bring you the Tennessee, Maryland, Florida Citrus Bowl from Orlando, Florida. Second and two, Ole Miss, the draw to McGee. First down and more to the 40. Arthur Humphrey set it up with a fine block at the line of scrimmage. This is perfect execution of the draw play. They've been throwing the ball. Air Force expects us to throw the ball. The alignment off, fake pass. McGee picks it off, starts forward. You can see the marvelous blocks on the linebackers. He breaks it clean past the linebackers into the secondary. Finally, a very fine tackle is made by Jedene. 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 We'll take French at the end of this telecast. The arm was hit. Powell's was by Charlie Heath. McGee has 21 carries for 105 yards. He's having quite a night. You know, Billy Brewer took over as a head coach at Ole Miss after a few years at Louisiana Tech. In his first year, co-Southeast Conference Coach of the Year, along with Jerry Claiborne of Kentucky. Billy had a dream come true. Not to come back to his alma mater. I believe only Billy Brewer and Ray Perkins at Alabama were the only two first-year head coaches that had winning records this year. And both returned to their alma mater. That's right. <laughs> Second and ten, Ole Miss. McGee juggled it momentarily. Goes inside the 35 to the 34. And the clock keeps moving. Five minutes, 17 seconds to play. It's plenty of time, and Ole Miss has three timeouts remaining, as does the Air Force. Charlie Heath and Tom Stanbury combining on the last stop for the Air Force. Boyce comes out for Ole Miss, and so does Andre Rogers. Dean Brown is in at split end for Ole Miss, third and five at the 34-yard line. Al under a blitz, throwing a dangerous pass over the middle. It is incomplete. Charlie Heath put a lot of pressure on Kelly Powell, the quarterback. And Ole Miss went to their split back set rather than the I formation set. When you're in the split backs, the two halfbacks can get out into the patterns much more quickly than they can from the I formation. That stops the clock with 448 remaining. There's an injured Ole Miss player, uh, or not a, an injured player, they have called for a timeout with 9-3 the score. Air Force on top will return to the Independence Bowl in just a moment. In six of 11 games that Ole Miss has played this year, it's come down to the last minute for the Rebels, so this is nothing new for them. 4.48 remaining, fourth quarter. It's a fourth down play coming up for the Rebels from the 34-yard line of the Air Force. Powell looking to put it upstairs. Incomplete, and Air Force holds again. And Air Force breathing much more easily I know they were thinking about we should have kicked that field goal, and if Ole Miss had taken it all away, it would have been a unanimous vote they should have kicked that field goal. Well, I have a lot of cadets that have come here from the Air Force Academy, and of course with Barstow Air Force Base just a few miles down the road, they had some more support. The Ole Miss Rebels brought quite a few fans from Mississippi. Air Force takes over first and 10 at their own 34-yard line. Again, having weathered the storm on the ground, the storm in the sky has also stopped. 4.42 to play in the game. Lauthen. Yard, and that's all. 
Very fine recovery defensively by Nesmith, the linebacker. Partially blocked, moved out, made the tackle. Old Miss came here with 14,000 fans and a lot of alumni that frequent and live here in the Shreveport area. And we still have 450 to play in the game. Air Force has all three of their timeouts remaining. They're not inclined to use them at this point, while Old Miss has two of their three remaining. Second out of nine. Maybe a couple of yards, and that's about all. And this is the time that Air Force obviously needs the first down to kill the clock. They've got a very tough play coming up at third and seven. Kirschner, the ball carrier for Air Force. It'll be third and six from the 38-yard line. And again, the big play. Seems every play anymore is a big play. They're just as big in the first quarter, but somehow you don't look at it that way. The magnifying glass is bigger in the fourth quarter. Randy Jones back in. Simmons goes out for the Air Force. And Lauthan back to throw. And the reception inside the 45-yard line to Mike Kirby. Now that's the misdirection pass that uh, we've been talking about, waiting for him to throw. The backs all go one way. Lauthan turns, throws back to Kirby, who is the crossing the field against the flow and against the rotation of the defense. He's wide open, makes a fine catch from a good throw by Lauthan. 20 yards in the pickup and a first down for the Falcons of Air Force as the clock becomes their ally with the three minutes remaining. Coming to that mark in the fourth quarter. Coleman back in in place of Kirby at wide receiver for Air Force. Inside handoff to John Kirshner. Lee Cole and Jerry Stewart combining for Ole Miss. A very concerned Billy Brewer and his staff. He's made a great drive. They moved 65 yards from that first down on the, their own one yard line after stopping the Air Force. That first down and just inside the five yard line, but they couldn't quite get it all the way. Randy Jones comes back in at right halfback for Air Force. Jody Simmons goes out. We have 2.20 remaining in the game. Coleman wide left. Second down and eight Air Force. Hurtling over the would-be tacklers is Mike Brown. Lawson's doing a great job of watching that 25 second clock. That time they snapped the ball with two seconds remaining on the clock. Eric Truitt made the stop of the play. We come to two minutes remaining. Ole Miss has two timeouts remaining. And in college football, there's no two-minute warning. No. <laughs> Ole Miss wishes there were. Kirby comes in with a play from the sidelines, replacing Tom Coleman at wide receiver. Minute and 40 to go. It's third and five play coming up for Air Force. Inside handoff. Loose ball. And a recovery by Ole Miss. Eric Truitt comes up. With the recovery on the third down play, John Kirshner fumbled it, and Ole Miss has one more shot with a minute and 32 to play in the game. Ole Miss Rebels sure have a flair for the dramatic, Bud Wilkinson. They surely do. However, that uh, key pass that was thrown to Kirby for 20 yards, they left the clock, and also, when they fumbled the ball, they don't have really great field position. 9-3 Air Force in front. But Ole Miss has the ball at their own 29-yard line when we return. There's no point in going home yet. This is not over. With a minute and 32 to play, Ole, uh, Ole Miss has the ball at their own 29-yard line. While we have an opportunity, as you get a look at Billy Brewer and his staff, our thanks to Rick Van Bremer and David Case from Ole Miss for our, being our spotter and statistician, and Jim Bowman, the assistant athletic director at the Air Force Academy, for spotting the Falcons for us tonight. Three wide receivers this time for Mississippi. First time they've been in the formation with three wideouts. Foul back to throw. Did he make the reception? No. Did not have his feet inbounds. That's intended for Stephen Cunningham. Good job of defensive play that time by Zollinger. A minute and 25 to play. Second and 10 coming up for Ole Miss. And coming into the game, Andre Rogers at flanker in place of Cunningham. Cunningham. 
Moffitt goes out wide to the left side. Holder wide right. Powell with time and overthrew the intended receiver. Looking for pass interference, but they'll not get it. Ball was thrown behind by the left. Well, uh, before the tackle was made, intended for Arthur Humphrey out of the backfield. And the best pass formation in football, of course, is three wide receivers plus the two backs in the twin set rather than the I formation set. You get five people into the pattern quickly. Zonliger, the safety for Air Force, is about 11 yards, 12 yards from the line of scrimmage, playing like a center field position. Okay. Third and 10. They're all back fairly far. Three man rush. Powell with time. And the reception inside the 50 yard line to old misses. I believe it's Timmy Moffitt. Who else? The big play man tackled by Greg Zollinger. Old Miss going without a huddle. That clock will stop as they move the chains. A minute and 11 to play. First and 10, old miss at the 48 yard line of the Air Force. Play goes for 23 yards. Mishandle on the snap from center and quickly falling on the ball was Kelly Powell, the quarterback. And the only problem with that, of course, is that it uh, lets the clock run, and Ole Miss does not want that to happen, so they take a quick timeout. And they still have one remaining. So a timeout called for by the Rebels of Ole Miss. And we'll take a break right here. No, we won't. We will stay right here. Here's the offensive MVP, Marty Lauthan of the Air Force Academy. The defensive MVP, Andre Townsend of Ole Miss. Senior Spirit Award presented to old Mrs. Dwayne Nesmith, who has a 3.67 grade point average in computer science. And the Air Force's Jeff Kubiak, 3.78 grade point average in international affairs. And as we mentioned later this week, the Gophers interview for the Rhodes Scholar Award, his Rhodes Scholarship. And last week he was awarded the scholarship by the Football Hall of Fame. That was at the dinner at, uh, I believe, the Waldorf in New York. minute and three seconds to go in this game. The ball sits just inside the, Ole Miss, the Air Force side of the 50-yard line. It's second down and 11, Ole Miss. After a big play by Timmy Moffitt. Again, it looks like it's going to be only a three-man rush with eight men covering. Powell, and making the reception and dropping the ball on his knees was Buford McGee. And almost as well to let him catch that one and let the clock run or use up the last time out. Perhaps it <laughs> skidded into his hands. I'm not sure he had it hit his hands first. Yeah, take a look at it again, see if he did catch it or whether he trapped it to it get the replay. <laughs> Here it is. You can see there's no real pressure. Three men rushing. They try to do a little stunt, but they can't get to Powell. He delivers the ball. The ball is a little bit low. Couldn't quite be held down by McGee. Third and 11, Ole Miss. Again, a three-man rush. And one gets through, loose ball, but Ole Miss is recovered, I believe. But deep inside their territory, inside the 40-yard line. Chris Funk was the man that dislodged the ball, and Ole Miss spends their last time out on fourth down. And Bob the, Avila was the man that uh, made sure that no further progress would be made. When you get uh, that kind of a rush from three men, you know that you've got a great athlete doing it. And as you pointed out earlier, he's a man that blocked the two field goals against Notre Dame. Chris Funk is uh, what the coaches call a horse. 6'4", 228. And has another year, which will make Coach Hatfield feel very good. The Volunteers of Tennessee, the Terrapins of Maryland. A week from tonight at 8 o'clock Eastern time, check your local listings for time and station. The Florida Citrus Bowl. Without question, Bud Wilkinson, as you look at Billy Brewer, the wet field heard the caliber of play tonight but in spite of that uh, you've got to tip your hat to these two football teams that came to play I think they played very well Howard uh, as you can see looking at the field there's water every step you take your foot splashes but there have not been a lot of bad plays and we've had uh, three fumbles by the Air Force which is unusual for them two interceptions by Ole Miss but it's been a well played football game and both teams have moved the ball well fourth down and 25 for Ole Miss 
throwing it up in the air, hoping to get a penalty or maybe a reception or whatever, and it is just batted down by Greg Zoniger. And that, too, was a very smart play. Fourth down, there's no reason to make the interception. Zoniger comes up with a big play again to thwart the old Miss Rebels and really a very difficult play, fourth and 25. Nothing in the playbook that says what you do on fourth and 25. Pray. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. Chris Funk and Bob Avila putting the pressure on Kelly Powell, the quarterback, and that could be all for that man. Billy Brewer, that I believe in looking at what he has done this year, that he will bring an old Miss team back to another bowl game very soon. He's done a wonderful job. Both coaches, Ken Hatfield and Billy Brewer, have done a remarkable job. 35 seconds remaining, and you know that Air Force is just going to fall on the football because Ole Miss is out of timeouts. You always hate to see the last series of plays for a quarterback like Laufen. <laughs> He's been a marvelous one for them. And, uh, just kind of nostalgic. And that's college football, of course, but uh, still wish he could play some more. Bach is winding down, and Ole Miss can do nothing to stop it. Air Force will not have to run off another play because they've not started the 25-second clock as yet. But it, was there a penalty against Air Force? I'm not sure. We're waiting to find out. The clock is winding down. There was no penalty. They're just going to let it wind down and out. Go. That's all she wrote. Air Force beats Ole Miss by the score of 9-3 to three in the eighth Independence Bowl football game. We'll return to Independence Stadium in Shreveport, Louisiana with a final score, Air Force 9, Ole Miss 3. We'll be back. Ken Hatfield and Billy Brewer, the respective head coaches in this Independence Bowl game. For Ken Hatfield, his second consecutive in, uh, bowl victory. He won the Hall of Fame Bowl last year against Vanderbilt. And Billy Brewer, his first trip to the bowl, not a successful one in terms of the final score. But, but I think you'll agree he did a remarkable job this year. Now, taking a team that loses the first part of the season and having won the last five is a marvelous accomplishment from a coaching standpoint. And I know that Ken Hatfield is very pleased that Mississippi did not score that touchdown when he didn't kick the field goal. Could have put it beyond a one touchdown lead and uh, they were stopped fourth and one it was a key key play they got away with it here are some of the people that are responsible for tonight's telecast i applaud them i applaud you for watching and we thank you for steve brad and bud wilkinson i'm howard david saying so long from independent stadium in shreveport louisiana